wale wengine wanauza butcheries na maduka uh, biashara imenoka kabisa sababu wale wageni tuko nao katika mwea ni wengi kabisa na kwa hivyo tunataka ikifika siku hiyo aondoe kafio ili tuweze kufanya kazi Now as preparations for the 2022 general elections get to the home stretch RABC has announced that it has issued inform P Lyco SA holdings with a tender to print ballot papers and other important documents such as voter registers the company defeated 11 other companies including Algorair who were involved in the 2017 elections according to RABC chairman of Bukati, the tender has already been officially awarded and that during next year's general election the commission will only print ballot papers based on the number of registered voters in the own going registration exercise IEBC has registered 499,098 new voters over a two week period a small number compared to its expectations of registering 3 million thus far a man accused of recording a woman who was using a washroom in Westland has told the court that he did it to please his eyes Mark Mutongoi told Kiberi chief magistrate Charles Monike that while recording Margaret Wangari he was not okay mentally. Mark is accused of intentionally and without permission recording Wangari on the 7th of this month at the Rupees Patrol Station in Westlands, Nairobi County. Prosecutor Robert Ogalo told the court that they found the CCTV footage that confirmed that Mark had used his phone to record the complainant. <laughs> Nishtakiwa kwa hiyo kesi mmoja kwa jina Mark Ambevi ndio alikuwa na simu hapo karibu na hiyo supermarket akawaka simu lake pale kando ya cho akajificha akaliweka simu kwenye dirisha na akaanza kumchukua video ile ambayo alikuwa hapo ndani the trial is said to begin on Friday. Now, all M-Pesa services will be disrupted tonight due to a scheduled internal maintenance of the services systems. In a notice, Safaricom said the disruption will affect all transactions offered by the mobile banking platform. The maintenance is scheduled to take place from 11.59 p.m. tonight to tomorrow, Wednesday, October 20th at 4 a.m. The purchase of airtime from the customer's M-Pesa account will also be unavailable during the maintenance period. Now, athletes, athlete Agnes Tidrop will be buried on Saturday this week at her home in Mosorio, Tanandi County. No officials led by Benson Kitili have said preparations for the funeral are underway. The funeral committee has said the body will undergo a post-mortem today at the Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital in Eldoret. Tidrop was found dead last week with stab wounds on her abdomen and neck at her home in El Gayo, Maracuit County. Police suspect that her boyfriend, Emmanuel Rotich, killed her. Rotich is under police custody after he was arrested in Mombasa. Now, tributes are being paid to former U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell, who died of COVID-19 complications aged 84. The former top military officer died yesterday, according to his family. Powell became the first African-American Secretary of State in 2001 and a Republican President George W. Bush. He also sparked controversy for helping Ghana's support for the Iraqi war. President Joe Biden, calling Powell a dear friend, said he had embodied the highest ideals of both warrior and diplomat. Former President Bush described Powell as a great public servant. President Barack Obama said Powell understood what was best for America and tried to bring his own life, career and public statements in line with that ideal. This is Newswire. I'm Dennis Aceto. Spice FM Nieri. The following takes place between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. Forgiveness is always conditional. Even before God, there's nothing like unconditional forgiveness. Government doesn't pay you pension until you retire. In fact, mm. they have no money for you. They pay you retire, they look for you retire. This country is punishing many young people. These young people are more susceptible to be deceived, to be taken advantage of, and they're more susceptible to be bought off. Let us also talk about where we want our country to go. You know, we are a population of very young people. We're in a state of capture. The judiciary is under duress. Parliament is in the pocket of the executive. You don't sit and wait for the regime to topple itself. It will never do so. By the way, let me tell you, these guys are so persuasive. I'm telling you they can persuade you to sell your grandmother. I'm telling you they can sell sand in the desert. 
See, see, has anybody on this program said to you as a guest, say, oh, shut up, we don't want to be told what to do? Has <laughs> <laughs> anybody been around? I will never listen. A bit of advice. Because you're working on the premise that we should all pay heed to these <laughs> proverbs. <laughs> It's a very suspect notion. <laughs> 102.5 Spice FM, Kisumu. All right, we're looking at some traffic already building up on Bus Road today. So that part that was closed off yesterday, uh, not causing too much of an issue this morning, and that has been opened up right at the General Motors uh, section of Mombasa Road, and that should be all right today because traffic is back to normal. All right, looking at other parts of the city, we're not seeing much going on right now. It's building up just a little bit on the thicker superhighway. Kiambu Road is free and clear at the moment. Shouldn't cause too much problems, at least not for now. Getting out into the city, you should be all right. Inbound and outbound looks pretty good. We see a little bit of a build-up on Gong road and a little bit of the same on langata road as well folks trying to get out early this morning it shouldn't be too much of an issue it's tuesday we're getting into the second day of the week before we come into a holiday tomorrow uh so it'd be interesting to see what traffic looks like in and outbound in most parts of the city though it does look pretty good let's talk on spice fmke on twitter text on 40127 what's the aim we want to keep things moving this tuesday This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin. Agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the situation it is room. Nine minutes the after old- six. How are you? How are you doing? Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. It's Tuesday, the nineteenth day of October, two thousand and twenty-one, otherwise known as Friday. You know how this week is panning out: Monday, Friday, Saturday, then. Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. Yesterday was Monday. Today is Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday. And then the day formerly known as Thursday (laughs) will now be Tuesday. And then Wednesday. And then Saturday again. Oh, no. Not not Wednesday. Friday. Saturday again. That's how it's going to look like. How are you doing, Ndu? I am fine, thank you. Are you well? It would appear that I am. Good it would, morning. eh? Mm. Okay. And how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How would it appear on your side? How will what appear? Hmm? 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 I am well. Good. And the other thing which you asked about appearing? See, going by <laughs> Ndu's nini. Appearance. <laughs> Going by Hindu's appearance, what? Hmm? Me, I first had disappearance. <laughs> I'm not sure quite. I'm not quite sure what's going on right now. Neither do well, I. Neither am I. Neither, <laughs> neither do I know what's happening. We just have a conversation. Ah, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. You're well, though. I am very well, thank you. Good. And how are you, Eric? Lassie? I'm very well, thank you. Super duper. Yes, mm. Asante sana. Thank you for tuning into Kenya's biggest conversation today. We have some interesting conversations to look at. What's happening in the country? So the president was inspecting that Deva Dam, which has been there for, you know, how many years now? Like 25, 7 or 27 years. People take 30 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's operating from the Sagana State Lodge for a couple of days. Uh, tomorrow is Mashujade. It's being hosted in uh, Kirinyaga County. And yesterday he was just doing some tours around Kirinyaga. He said mm-hmm. one or two things. We'll be looking at that. The senator of Nairobi City County, Johnson Sakaja, will be joining us at 8 o'clock. And we're talking about, so, you know, the job of a senator is, first of all, to defend 
the interests of devolution in their county. Right. Now, devolution in Nairobi is iffy iffy. A governor who was elected by the people went and decided to Mimi Kazi Manishinda signed and gave the job to the national government. The national government brought in the national the Nairobi Metropolitan Services to do the work. Now, are we going to have devolution coming back or is this NMS thing going to be permanent? Mm. What's happening? Okay. So we'll be talking to Johnson Sakaja about that and many other things on what's happening in the country in the current politics. Keep it right here for that. We'll also be talking about COVID-19 and how the numbers are looking like. Mm. So yesterday we hit the lowest ever positivity rate. Indeed. 0.9% positivity rate in the country yesterday. Uh, this was from 33 cases uh, that were reported um, uh, here. So lowest ever indeed, 0.9% after 33 cases recorded. And we also have promises from the president that, okay, guys, curfew will be lifted soon. Soon uh, is an interesting word to use because I guess that by definition, uh. soon would be three for Maybe let's five. let's just run run this course. How many days remaining for the current? So what? <laughs> is it Siku Zikisha? Uh, I'll not put another curfew. You will not. Right. Okay. Mm. Uh -huh. So that's what we're looking at, right? Uh, lowest ever, as you said, positivity rates in, in the country um, so far. So. That's a good thing. The aim, as always, as we've been saying, is to keep the positivity rates under 5%. And for the last three or so you know, weeks, going to about, uh, going to about a month and a half, actually, we've seen positivity rate of under 5%. This is a good thing. This is where you want to be. Uh, this was from a sample size of 3,530, one recorded death. And uh, now let's look at vaccines. We know that 7.5 million is what is currently available in the country. So far, 4.5 million have been administered. 3.3 million of those are the first dose. 1.2 of those are the complete dose. So we're looking at now 4.5% uh, of the adult population has been fully vaccinated. And we are looking at, of all that has been administered so far, 35.3% have seen a second dose uptick. All right. Mm. So about 65% of those that have been vaccinated, about 65% have received the first dose. 35% are completely vaccinated. So mm. uh, are we going to meet the goal of 5.8 by tomorrow? Highly unlikely. Yeah, we will. Okay. 5.8 million people would not have been vaccinated by tomorrow. You know the uh, when is tomorrow? The twentieth of October. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean tomorrow. Is it the only twentieth that we're going to have this year? When Mashuja Day celebrations will take place in Kirinyaga County. Will well will be well on course. Will be well on to course. hitting our target. However, we which is a good thing. The, sure. Okay. <laughs> However, we would not have hit the target of five point eight million. Voila. Of voila. course. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, that's about the size of it. That's what we're looking at right now. You know, the passing away of uh, General uh, Colin Powell mm. has also opened up this discussion about COVID and the comorbidities, the vaccine, the working of the vaccines when you already have pre-existing conditions. Mm. Yeah. Because apparently he was being treated for cancer, blood cancer. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the discussion is when somebody has a pre-existing condition, how effective then is the drug? How, yes, how Plus effective is the vaccination? Vaccinated. He was fully vaccinated. Mm. And the, this is the thing about research. A case like this now highlights something that actually has been mentioned, but it hasn't really been in the news. That the problem with the pre-existing condition, it is the one thing that may actually hinder the drug from, from working, working effectively. Yes. Plus, with a pre-existing condition, you're most likely already on a cocktail of medication. Yes, and you Which don't know what contraindications mm. exist. Mm. So there'll always be a story in explaining something. There has to be. There has mm. to be. There'll always be something which is why I keep saying, when you see, um, you know, governments and platforms trying to gag other people coming up with their own thinking, this is wrong. Let anybody who's thinking whatever they are thinking about this vaccine, let them, say. let them say what they're saying. If they're working on something, let them put it out there. 
Just to come out there and say, you know, we as YouTube are not going to allow any information that's contrary to, or we as Facebook, who says it's cont contrary to what? M more important. What do you know? Even the naysayers have a reason why they are naysayers. Yeah, exactly. Yes, you may not agree with it, but so what if you don't agree with it? And many of them, okay, so they are naysayers who are just ordinary people who are sitting there saying, no, 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 the vaccine is wrong. I mean, just thinking. And then there are those who are actual researchers and professionals in this field. Mm. We're also coming out to say, no, they have a reason, this and the other. Let everybody speak, man. Yep. Let everybody we are live streaming the show on uh, Spice FM KE, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and www.spicefm.co.ke. Yes, you are online. Say hello to us. We'll be saying hello to you shortly. This is Kenya's biggest conversation at 17 minutes after 6. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Spice up your life 24 7 around the world, non stop. This is Spice FM. Arnold, we're in a society where men have become very lazy. Mm. They have made people's daughters <laughs> become mama fours. You know, mama four? Yes. <laughs> that you come to a man's house, maybe yeah. you went out or you've come for a weekend, you find all his shirts mm. in his laundry basket. Yeah. He was waiting for you to, to come and clean them. his wife. <laughs> <laughs> including his inner garments. Right, yeah. Ladies, stop doing that. Let me, let me Those tell you. are wifely duties, and even some wives don't That's do that. That's literally what I was about to say. I was like, you know, there's even some wives who don't even, who refuse to do that. The only way to live your best life is to create a balance between work, love, and play. The Adults in the Room is the only show on radio dedicated to educating Kenyans on how they can stay winning in life and in love. Text the word ADULT to 22840 to get the latest clips from Adults in the Room directly to your mobile phone. SMS ADULTS to 22840. Hey, it's getting hot in here. The media has greatly contributed to the moral rot that we experience in this country. I remember a senior politician telling me, point blank, nobody steals in the field, it's stolen in the granary. So my friend, if you are going to win an election, dipange kwa granary. I think we are suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. Mm. Our violator and abuser <laughs> is also our redeemer in our mind. The whole political class, the whole political institution is rotten. It is based on ideals that cannot progress our country forward. This is The Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Good morning. We're looking at cloudy conditions in Nairobi at 16, highs of 24 and lows of 15. It's partly cloudy at 14 in Nakuru, highs of 26. 22 will be the high in Nyeri where it's cloudy at 15. And Eldoret is clear at 14, highs of 24. It'll come back down to lows of 14 today. In Mombasa, in some parts, rain at 25, highs of 30 and lows of 24. And in Malindi, um, it is uh, raining as well at 26, highs of 30 and lows of 25. We're looking at clear conditions in Kisumu this morning at 20, highs of 28 and lows of 19. While in Kakamega, it's clear at 19, highs of 28 and lows of 15. Into Kampala, it's mostly clear at 18. That'll be today's low, going to highs of 27. While in Dar es Salaam, it's sunny already at 23, highs of 31. Johannesburg is cloudy at 9, highs of, 10, of 19 and lows of 8. While in Lagos, it's mostly clear, at least for now, at 24, highs of 30. Kinshasa is experiencing rain showers this morning at 24. We'll see lows of 23 and highs of 29. Out east in Beijing at 11, it's sunny. We'll see highs of 13 as winter beckons and lows of 1. We're also looking at cloudy conditions in Paris at 16 with highs of 23 and lows of 16. London is cloudy at 18, highs of 20 and lows of 16. New York on Monday night is clear at 11. We'll see highs of 19 and lows of 9. Classic soul, R&B, smooth jazz, neo soul, and nostalgic ballads. Make some noise. Yeah. You're listening to Spice FM. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 All right, 21 FM. minutes after 6. A very good morning to you, wherever you are. We'll be acknowledging you shortly. But CT Muga, mm -hmm. so I'm missing something. <laughs> this man, <laughs> this man, this person, 
Thank you very much. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, did you greet me and say chamge? Something like that. Yes. Mm. Okay. That greeting I understand. Mm. This is the proverb for today and I am going to try as best as I can to <clears throat> yes, to <clears throat> All right. Korom yetundo omo ome are kick. Korom yetundo omo ame are kick. Are kick kiki kiki k y i k i kiki 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 k y i k i yes all right and this is kalenjin not kamba so it's not j no this is kalenjin it is not kamba okay okay korom again korom getundo omo ome are kiki the lion can be strong brave and fierce but it doesn't eat its young ones. Ah. Mm. The lion can be strong, brave and fierce, but it doesn't eat its young ones. Yes. Lion. Yes, my source. <laughs> uh, Have you watched Nat Geo? <laughs> okay, maybe they don't eat them, <laughs> but they kill them. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, please. Oh no. Maybe they meant lioness. Maybe in the proverb, maybe they meant lioness. Mm. Right. Okay. No, they meant lion. They know lionesses exist. But again, a lion is a lion. Korom is korom. You say lion, is a lion, then you can say male lion, female lion, but lion. Simba ni Simba. Yes. Simba Marara. Well, yes. they say <laughs> Simba Marara. Uh-huh. A lion may be. Can be strong, brave, and fierce, but it doesn't eat. It doesn't it's, eat. It eats it. young. Right. That's a good one. Thank you very much. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. Let's look at the newspaper headlines. As we do that, access the Standard e-paper from wherever you are. And you get to access premium content on standardmedia.co.ke for only 20 shillings per day. You also get free Sudoku. You get free crossword puzzles and access to the Standard Archives. 10 days free access to the Standard Archives. 20 shillings daily. That's the Standard e-paper. What's in the headlines, Ndu? Okay, so looking at uh, for once, for once. For once. Uh, let me just uh, do this. Okay. Uhuru to Mount Kenya, wait for my signal. I am the smoke. President has reignited the debate on succession politics and urges restless mountain to wait for his signal, even as top aspirants dangle goodies in their scramble for a piece of the vote-rich region. So we saw quite a lot going on yesterday. Mm. And uh, indeed, the president uh, will be at the Sagana State Lodge for uh, um, a while now, uh, ahead of tomorrow's celebrations. But he's broken his silence. He's not said a lot in a while. Mm. He's just come from his visit to the Americas. President Uru Kenyatta has waded into the debate on the direction Mount Kenya will take on his preferred successor. He had remained silent even as presidential hopefuls have been pitching tent in the region to win the other 5 million voters to raise their stakes in next year's polls. His deputy, William Ruto, ODM leader, Raila Odinga, and Amani National Congress leader, uh, Musalia Mudavadi, have been the most vi- visible of the aspirants. A number of Mount Kenya top political politicians have been forced to come together and appointed NAC Kenya leader, Martha Karua, to be their spokesperson as they outline their irredeemable minimum to any aspirant. Don't give them the benefit of wanting to decide your political future. For what, for that, wait. For that, wait for my signal on where we should be heading. The president said yesterday when he made an impromptu visit to the ongoing Thimbadam project in the company of cabinet secretaries Cicely Karaoke and Joe Mushero, mm. and also PS's Paul Moringa and Charles Hinger. He asked Mount Kenya residents and especially the youth, there they are again, to welcome any campaigners and take goodies offered but not to be used by politicians for their selfish plots. <laughs> Eat the money and th- uh, that will be given to you. But do not let a politician think for you, who said at the site of the 19 billion dam that will expand the Moya irrigation scheme and more than double rice production through enabling the cultivation of the two-season crop. The project is funded by the government and Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA. He said he would be back for dialogue with the youth on mm. matters affecting the country. Today we are on a development tour. Mm? 
But I am coming back so that we can discuss issues affecting us as Kenyans. Right. Key things to take away there. Uh. Here I am. I'm telling you, I've heard the rumblings, but you guys hold on. I will tell you, wait for my signal. Then I'll tell you who we're going to vote for or who we're going to bring in. Mm. Number two, these people should come around offering you one, two, three. Take it, eat, but don't sell your birthright. <laughs> and then finally, today we're here to talk about development, which you would think would be the interesting thing to check out in terms of production of rice and things like this. But hey, we've come to do that today. Let's not discuss but you those don't things. Worry. I will be Don't back. worry. I'll be back and I'll speak to you one on one. Mm. He says, when some leaders achieve their political ambitions, you will not see them again mm. when you're in need. Be watchful. Use your brains well, lest you suffer forever if you make a mistake of choosing a wrong leader. Said, some of these guys are coming here telling you things. Eh? Mm. They're telling you things. <laughs> My friend, you're just bait. Yeah. When you give them the vote and they're promising to do left, right and center, they will go. You'll never see, You'll them, never again. see them again. I know these things. That's I what you were saying. People. I know these things. I know these people. You guys have just been thinking I'm quiet. <laughs> I'll come and talk to you. At some point, he said, you know, <laughs> I've told, told you things here, but there are cameras. I don't want to be quoted. Eh? <laughs> I'll come and talk to you. One on one. When I come, we'll agree. You switch off your phone. You leave your phone somewhere. We enter into a room. We speak. I tell you things. Okay. And they said, okay, okay, okay. Show, of course, a politician. By show of hands, let me see if you've understood me. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. 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 By, by okay. show of hands, show me if you have not understood me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that bit of Kula ko so and so yeah, and yeah, yeah, Kura ko yeah. so and so, mm. I am supremely opposed to that opinion, mm. that move. Just eat. If they bring, just eat. Nah, no problem. Nah. This is what is encouraging p voter bribery and all these things. Mm. So you just know, you go, I mean, kura, 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 kula, 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 kura. Uh, uh, no, this is wrong. Actually, in all, in all honesty, mm. any leader worth their weight in salt mm. ought to be castigating this trend yeah. and saying, look, you really want to avoid people who want to dish out money to you. Yes. Okay. You see, the assumption that someone will take money and it won't affect their vote, that, it's not true. No, it's not true. Human beings don't function that way. The person who you eventually end up voting for will think you voted for them because they gave you money. Yes, exactly. They'll even come and lost. say, I outspent mm. my opponents. Yeah. Or the one who lost will say, it's because I didn't give enough. It's because I yes. didn't give enough. Yeah. So I've got to go and look for more. Mm. And so this cycle will never yeah. end. You know, those last days of uh, towards an election, uh. people do strange things. Mm. That's when people sell houses. Yeah. People sell cars. People sell what? And yet there can only be one winner. Yep. Indeed. Mm. Yep. This, I think this is something that the, the president should have led from the front and said, you know what, let's, let's avoid this kind of politics. Let people come and tell you what they want to do and ask them questions. How are you going to do this? You say you want to do this and the other. Mm. Tell us how. Tell us by when. Give us milestones. Let's interrogate what you're telling us. Actually, the, this one... But what he's saying is just, you eat. The people I, w I would point a direct finger uh. at, uh, the people who advise the president on such matters, uh. it's something you should put their foot down and say, Mr. President, you need to speak strongly against this trend. Yep. Yep. Come out. This is wrong. It's wrong in many ways. So the nation has a different angle to that story. From the same same... And the photo here is uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta addressing residents of Rukenya village in Kirinyaga County after he inspected the ongoing construction of Deba Dam yesterday. The 15 million cubic meter dam will be completed by the end of the year. City, mm -hmm. this one, end of the year, Deba Dam will be completed. How long have they been building that Deba Dam? <laughs> How long? How long has the earth been alive? <laughs> hey, 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 when was creation? Because the last time I heard, I, it was three-quarter complete. Now, I have no idea what that means. Uh, Seeing as you didn't know how it was supposed to, how <laughs> the length and breadth of the dam. Is By the end of the year. Okay. By Christmas. That is something that one By can work With the end of the year. One can work with mm. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the Thiba Dam that, will yes. be completed. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's what they say. Okay, complete meaning what? It's you, finished. Is it, Ready yeah, for yeah, use. Meaning what? Is it yeah. Commissioned. Yeah. Commissioned. Meaning what? Does it have water? Does it not have water? Uh, what does it mean? What it will it mean? Are we generating electricity? What are we doing? Oh. 
Are farmers getting the water for their to their farms? Uh, what does completion mean? Mm-hmm. There's water inside. It's finished. It's been commissioned for use. Amen. No. Remember the other one he inspected in uh, Makweni. Uh. <laughs> Did you see? And now they were saying it's what three quarter complete. Did and you see that thing? Inspecting the development. <laughs> oh, <way. laughs> you know this <laughs> this 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 story. The, the narrative we keep hearing of complete projects mm. and <laughs> when they might be completed. Mm. I think with every statement there has to be an immediate follow up of a mm. question yeah. because this is something we've been hearing for so long and with things which are important and things which should change the lives of people. Your <laughs> dam will become Tarkwell dam, is it? <laughs> you know me, me, the, the thing I like about Tarkwell <laughs> is because there's a purity to it. <laughs> it remained an idea. <laughs> As it's pure. Why? 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 That ground is as has as God had made it. <laughs> <laughs> Save little trampling of animals there. Yeah. There's Aurora and Kimorel. Uh, 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 Those ones are, realm. you know, it's a totally different realm. And then there's Tarquil that has been there since the Moy days. It started constructing it that long ago, and now you're talking about Zibadan. Yeah. Yes, and uh, Aurora and Kimorel again. <laughs> yeah. An idea. It's a good idea. Whose time has come. Suggestion of infrastructure. Actually, not only has the time come, the money also came and went. And went. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take this break. It's 37 minutes to 7 o'clock. Let's see how the roads are looking like. Yesterday was just mud chaotic on Mombasa Road. Right? Terrible. Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Tell us how it's looking like this morning. Good morning. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Spice up your life. 24-7, around the world, nonstop. This is Spice FM. Hello. Hello. Umesikia? Uh, nimesikia nini? Ujesikia habari? Hey, ebu wacha ni kuambie. Kile kimetokea. Hello. 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 Don't wait for hearsay. Dial star 550 star 1 hash to read the standard e-paper from the convenience of your mobile phone for only 20 shillings from your telecom line. And stay up to date for a reliable source with over 100 years of experience with no additional data charges. Classic soul, R&B, smooth jazz, neo soul... Uh, the Mombasa Road on uh, General Motors opened up back to normal traffic, so that's good. We're not seeing too much traffic building up on Mombasa Road right now, but it's likely to continue in a short while. Uh, where there is traffic already is Langata Road. We're also seeing some of it on Uhuru Highway. Langata Road, uh, then getting towards Aerodrome, is not a problem right now, so you can get onto Uhuru Highway without too much of an issue. Jogo Road is already starting to build up, getting then towards Landis and out towards Kamkunji. The Thika Super Highway this morning... Uh, quite some traffic there heading towards a survey just past Utali. Uh, Kiambu Road also is building up quite some as you join then towards Muthaika Square and then getting into the city. Apart from that, doesn't look too bad, folks, actually. You can uh, traverse the city without too much of an issue. Coming out of Westerns looks good. Waiaki Way, you can use it um, without getting stuck, at least not for now. And if you decide that you want to experience the city, you can then use the Red Hill Link Road and then see what it looks like on the other side of town. Apart from that, doesn't look too bad. However, it is just a few minutes after 6.30. Let's look at what it looks like around 7, shall we? Talk to us in case you get into a sticky situation on Spice FMKE on Twitter. Text on 40127. Spice FM, Malindi. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. It's five minutes to seven. Speaking of uh, Dams City, what's the headline on the Business Daily? The headline on Business Daily, World Bank detains 14 billion loan for COVID vaccines. Okay. Is there a dumb headline? I beg your pardon? Is there a dumb headline? Actually, yes. There's ah. a dumb headline. <laughs> DPP drops Aurora contract charge against Rotich. 
That's the damn headline in the oh, business. Damn. Damn it. Sheesh. A TDP does what? <laughs> Drops Aurora judge contract charge against Rotich. Okay. <laughs> Not all, mm. just some of the charges. Some charges. Yeah. What are those charges and why? Right. Let me read it out so that uh, it isn't me saying it. I am yeah. merely reading what somebody else has written. <laughs> You're just mm. reporting. I'm just reporting. Mm. Okay. Right. This is what they say. Uh, Director of Public Prosecutions, Nudin Haji, has dropped some charges against former Treasury Cabinet Secretary Henry Teach over the 63 billion Aror Kimwarer dam scandal. Uh -huh. In application filed ahead of the trial that was set to begin yesterday, the DPP instead shifted some of the charges related to the award of tenders for the construction of two dams to Italian firms to former Career Valley Development Authority, Managing Director David Kimosob and others. Hmm. Reasons be the new charge claim sheet uh, claims that Mr. Kimosob and senior officials of Korea Valley Development Authority willfully failed to comply with the competitive bidding for the project tenders as required by Section uh, Twenty Nine uh, One of the Public Private Partnership Act. Hmm. Mr. Rutich had initially been charged with engaging uh, the collapsed Italian construction company, CMC di Ravenna. Essentially, what this report is talking about is there were all these fellows who had been charged, very many of them, uh. and each of them had some charges levied against them. Now, mm. all that has happened, it's not that Mr. Rotich is not being charged, no, 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 but some of the charges that had been levied against him have now been moved to Kenya, uh, the Cario Valley Development Authority. The DPP also, in the story now on page 8 of the Standard, through his assistant Alexander Muteti and special prosecutor Taib Ali Taib, also wants to be allowed to consolidate two cases against former Treasury CS Henry Rotich over the scandal. Rotich and his co-accused are facing 40 charges in two separate files in which the prosecution claims they conspire to defraud the government of more than 63 billion shillings. The two cases arise from similar facts and circumstances. Since the prosecution will be relying on the same witnesses and exhibits, it is only fair that the two cases be consolidated to save time. The assistant DPP argued that consolidating the two files would result in reduction of the number of charges from 40 to 30 and have the 52 witnesses testify once instead of appearing in court twice over the same issue. But defense lawyers, led by Kato Kigen, are opposing this application to consolidate, arguing that it's a deliberate move by the DPP to delay the start of the case. The accused were charged more than two years ago. Keegan says it's not fair that the prosecution always applies to amend the charge sheet whenever the matter is scheduled for hearing, which has made the accused to plead to fresh charges five times. Are you hearing that? Consolidate case, drop case, drop. So take this is a new file. New plea. New plea. How do you plead? Not guilty. Okay, so here. Yeah. Next time DPP comes. Now, you see these two cases. They have the same witnesses. They have the same circumstances. We want to consolidate them. Okay, consolidate them. Okay, thank you, sir. Come again. How do you plead? Not, not guilty. guilty. These games. And I do not understand. Nothing has started in terms of a judicial process. Nothing. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pleading, dropping, plea charge, consolidate. drop, consolidate, plea charge, drop, consolidate. Nothing has started. Investigations may have been done. Evidence has not been presented. The process from a judicial standpoint has not begun. Then you ask questions about why these cases take so long. This is it. Two years since <laughs> Rotich was first taken to court. The case has not started. Nothing. We are still talking about you know how to arrange this case. Yeah. You go with two different charges, same witnesses, and then later you're like, ah, how about, how about... We just make this one charge. Hmm. Why didn't you, you think, think about, about that, before? that before? You know, mm. the thing about these cases, uh, <clears throat> from what I gather, the, there are very many moving parts in these cases. Uh -huh. Very many. And one sometimes isn't quite sure who these issues touch, the nerves that they rattle. And with the passage of time, mm. and with, should you see other things coming to light? Yeah. And with the real realignments of 
political forces and the changes, you can find that something that started off in one particular direction could very easily change direction. That is not what Muteti is saying here. See, Muteti can just say what he's saying. It's okay. <laughs> I'm also just saying what he's saying. just coming here to say, okay, now we have realized that these two cases are similar. These two charges are similar. We have the same, same witnesses. We but have, how, uh, but uh, they uh, were similar from the beginning. I mean, that's uh, a, indeed, that's, that's the thing. The thing. <laughs> so what, rather than waste two years, why us. didn't you just do this from the beginning? It is clear that the similarity did not start now. The similarity has always been present. Yes. So why was it so difficult then to point out that sim from the very beginning? Because who raised the charge? See, it is you. You're the one who raised the charge in yes. the beginning. Yes. You you're the one who has come with these 30 charges. charges. Both 30. These two that you're saying are similar. You are the one who raised them. Yep. It was not as though somebody else raised them and then brought them to you. You raised them. So you should have been able to see at the beginning, at the genesis of all of this, that they were similar. Wasting people's time and money for two years. You've you not know, can you imagine? anything yet. Remember what we were talking about the other day? That um, you get into the system and you stay there forever. Let's work with the premise that any of these people who's been charged here is actually innocent. Okay? Imagine. Actually innocent. Let's just, yeah, assume. For two years... You have been bonded by the court. You cannot travel. You, your life, everybody knows that you are facing those Kimorer dumb charges. Actually, you, you have basically, you are living a different life. For, in, in and the case has not started. Eric, and it's the, not about to start. In this country, mm. we know you took the money. That's it. And yet, that is not what the law states. You're innocent. People until proven guilty. People have already judged you. Uh, done. And the kind of harassment that you've received by the time you're being taken to court. Police raided your home early in the morning. They woke your children up before your children have even gone to school. I mean, they saw the drama, the trauma that has been visited on the families. I'm just saying, imagine somebody is actually innocent. Mm. And then you go through all this. And you're sitting there wondering, so when shall my case start? Oh, the DPP now wants to do this and the other. Oh, now the DPP has, has decided that so-and-so is going to be a witness. So-and-so now is no longer being charged. It takes forever, man. It does take forever. And you are seeking justice. Justice is not just for the taxpayers who lost their money. But Eric, it's also for the people who are being have accused. Have you forgotten the Goldenberg case? Eh? Mm. Did people not die long before that case was ever? And was it really ever concluded? Nope. Precisely. So the reason why it went quiet is because the people who, are, who had been charged died. Mm. Imagine. Yes. Many so cases. you die without a conclusion to the matter. Now, what havoc does that wreck? On your life and on your, the, the life of and your family. family and your family, mm. your family. You just sit there. I mean, case take forever. And you know, as far as somebody is concerned, what they're doing is you know they're looking at the file. Oh, it's uh, uh, you know we are back. We are due back in court on Wednesday. So what can we do now? Because you're not ready to start this thing. Let's go and make this application. This is unfair. Does the, the question travesty. then have mer merit when you then ask, "Are we actually solving crimes in this country?" We're not. We're not. It's all high There's drama. Judicial dance here and there, prosecutorial dance, investigative dance, everybody just dancing. Nothing is going on. It's just drama we are being treated to. It's a quarter to seven. Let's take another quick break and then we look at more headlines in the papers. Good morning. Spice FM. Oh, <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Oh, everybody steals. Mm -hmm. It's better a thief mm -hmm. who brings something small back. Mm -hmm. And I say to myself, there's no better thief. A thief is a thief, period. Mm -hmm. All those bribes, how much they are getting by her, how much inconvenience they are causing, as much as you call it a small case, it's worth it to be convicted. The truth is, we are a tribal nation. Because if we were not tribal, and I want to go back to this, mm -hmm. you cannot continue walking around with a mug which is clean outside and it's rotten inside. We have become a full laser country. We have mortgaged our country because of debt. You've got one chef working, mm -hmm. and the assistant chef, wakati and the karoge is karoge unga nini ayuko. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. 24-7, around the world, non-stop. This is Spice FM.
Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 okay. Spice FM, Nairobi. So, 162 exam centers have been closed following a policy change. Just thought you might like to know. Some 162 schools that had less than 40 candidates have been closed as examination centers, even as 112,000 more candidates registered for national exams this year compared to 2020. Despite the increased number of candidates, the Kenya National Examinations Council has reduced the number of examination centers for the KCSC and KCPE. For KCPE, the number has been reduced from 28,000 last year to, sorry, 28,467 to 28,329 and from 10,437 KCSC centers to 10,413. This was after NEC issued a circular in May directing schools with less than 40 candidates to register their candidates in neighboring schools. The reduction of examination centers has affected 24 secondary schools and 138 uh, primary schools. The most affected are primary school, uh, private schools, which have been pushing for the number of candidates to be reduced to the usual 15 candidates, which NEC had set as the minimum number uh, for per school. So, yesterday, Chief Executive Officer David Njengere said the rise in KCSC candidates demonstrates more students are completing secondary education, so it'll cost more to administer the exams. Clearly, the 100% transition policy is bearing fruit, so we can't complain but celebrate that more children are able to complete secondary education. So as more are completing, more obviously are sitting the exam, but we're closing down the centres. So, but... I think this this matter had been uh, reported earlier. Mm. Yep, where an examination center has very few candidates, then you consolidate and take and, and go to, to another a neighboring one, school. to a neighboring one. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of um, looking at the logistics and everything. Yeah, the logistics of getting exam papers, invigilators, etc. To, yeah. to that center, and then you have a reduced number of candidates uh, sitting the exam, mm. right? Uh, but then the thing is now, with the 100% uh, transition, you then have, and it, according to them, has borne fruit. You have more people sitting exams. So then, according to them, the logical thing would then be to spread candidates, go back to those centers where you had initially closed. But now school is saying, shut them down. I mean, uh, NEC is saying, shut them down because we don't have enough. But schools are saying... They don't have enough what? We don't have enough candidates sitting in the exam per center. So if you have less than 40 candidates in an exam, yeah. close it down. But we know we what the game it. has been played, mm. by, especially by the private schools, on this issue of exam centers. Yep. Have few people in your exam center, then send the poor performers to another center. Mm. So that... It doesn't affect your mean. You raise your mean. Your mean becomes excellent. Mm. Yeah. So what are they saying now? Actually, now because we have more people sitting in the exam, so now we... You know, they're saying it's going Isn't it confusing? <laughs> there are more people, so we're shutting down, okay? Why? That's what I'm because there are fewer people... I'm thinking, what are you talking about? You see, if there are more people, they are in school. Yeah, yeah of course they're in school. That means that there are more people in the schools. Mm. So yes. why do you still have a, an exam center that has like five registered students? Mm. Why? You see, the key word here is those number are the ones who are registered. Mm. But are they the ones who are in that class? The no. ones who are registered. No. But more importantly, I'm thinking of the inconvenience. The school represents the center. It's not as though the center is mm. apart from the school. Mm. It's not independent of the school. Yes. No. So this school meets a need. So you are telling us that you shut down this school as a center, then all the, so, so these students are going to have to go somewhere else for, to set the exam, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Okay. Can you think of the inconvenience? It's extremely sort of you know, you know, the, the suggestion has been that you then for those you register in a neighboring school. You know, in town. Look, look. Go ahead, Eric. We're saying schools with less than forty candidates to register their candidate their candidates in the neighboring school. Mm. What school is this? If we have more transition, blah 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 blah. So there's a school that has from fours less than forty candidates who have registered for their for an exam. Mm. Me, I, you know, I don't get that logic. That's the thing. I don't get it. I'm for shutting it down. Mm. Unless you can explain to me. So how is it that you have ended up with 40, less than, less 40, than 40 from fours how? in your school? Mm. So it's a one-stream school. Right. That's what it could be. 
It's a small, small school. Small populated school. Mm. Well, go to the neighboring no. one. Go to the neighboring one. It's essentially what they're saying. No. Right? You know. Mm. But now we have more students. Now that's another thing. That now as they're looking at the registration at KNEC right now, mm. and they're projecting, because exams are coming up, right, in the next six months, uh. and registration has already taken place, at least for a number of students, that they're looking at significantly more in terms of percentage of registration 2021 vis-a-vis 2020. So now they're saying... We have more students registered. It doesn't make sense then now to shut down these centers. Okay. Yeah, there's some schools that have been pushing to have 15 mm. candidates being a minimum mm. in a center. Mm. 15. Aye. <laughs> Boss. Yeah. Send police officers, send in vigilators, send mm. in, 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 in to 15. More exam material, this, that, the other thing. Right, so that's um, what it looks like. You know, mm. okay, I don't something get Something called it. examination fees, yeah? Mm. yeah? I've never, much as I was a head teacher myself, mm. I never really bothered to find out what, what, what the What is that, ad, the, the examination is fee? Yeah, the, this fee, not admission, the examination fee. Examination sorry. fee. I've never, now that we're talking about it, you know, when you mention police, and I'm thinking, what, okay, apart from just printing the mm. exams, yeah? What else the logistics of delivering an exam. And you see how many centers we are talking about countrywide. We are talking about 28,467 centers for KCPE last year. Yes. 28,329 centers for KCSE. Countrywide. For two weeks, let's say for KCSE. Every day we are delivering serious logistics. Mm. It means a lot. So yes. you're saying that you think the registration fee is for that? No. The it, exam, exam it, fee. It, it just made me think eh. in terms of cost because I was saying that this is what I was thinking about. Eh. We are getting this news now, but I am assuming that those who are involved were informed much, much earlier mm. or, or they've known all along. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So they've known that, look, carry on with your school registration. Mm. Do what it is that you need to do, but... When it comes to the exams, mm. this is the path that you're going to follow. Mm. Yes. It's just that thought that made me think, okay, so the examination fees that they're paying, this logistics, because they use policemen, they use public, uh, they, they use government vehicles. Uh, mm. It's quite something. Not only is it quite something, it works. Right. NEC, IBC, they run a logistic system that works. It works. And believe me, the same thing happens throughout the country. Yes. When people are sitting for history, it is, it history, is history throughout the country. Across the country. Now you tell me. You tell me. Mm. Then they want to tell you that certain things Same paper. Work. Yes. And the number of cases of fraud. Reduced. The percentage. Reduced significantly. Yes. It's statistically relevant. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Indeed. So, there are COVID jobs everywhere, according to uh, Mercy Kahenda of the Standard, but very few Kenyans are taking up the vaccines. Kenyans are, Kenya has kept COVID-19 infections and deaths low, but experts are warning that there is need to intensify vaccination drive due to the low uptake of jobs. So, in the seven-month analysis of COVID vaccines, the Ministry of Health notes that since the national vaccination drives kicked off on the 5th of March 2021, there is worrying laxity among the general population. This might hamper the target of vaccinating 10 million people by December and at least 26 million by the end of next year. Mm. To increase the uptake, the government this August directed that all civil servants take the job. But the numbers still appear to be low. And according to Dr. Mulua, he is the, what, the DMS for preventive and promotive uh, care. Mm. He's attributing the laxity and disparity in, in, the, in the first and second dose to shortage in supply of vaccines experienced in May. After India halted supply, Kenya had ordered the 24 million doses of extra, uh, AstraZeneca. In June and July, the ministry was giving a second dose. So I don't really get what, they, you what he's saying. Be yeah. You'd be surprised. He's saying that uh, the, the, the reason why there's a low uptake is because... Apathy. Ap I think there's a lot of misinformation still out there. And people are riding on it a lot um, so people are choosing not fear. to go for the people vaccine. People are choosing not to go. I had a conversation with my house manager the other night. I said, you know, you need to go and get this uh, jab. Mm. And you know what she told me? 
ano, bado nataka kuzaa. Right. Meaning that her, in her understanding if she takes the vaccine it's some kind of uh, giving back yeah out <laughs> so you can imagine this is one person you can imagine what happens when they sit in the little how the caucuses yeah. and have and talk you can imagine how this kind of information spreads like wildfire But you know i, I have a, an issue here <clears throat> when i pass by i pass by two health facilities on my way home mm-hmm. there's always a queue mm. Another a short one in Nairobi. Right? Yes, mm. I'm talking about Nairobi. Mm. So, when they say apathy, do they give details of where it is they experience this apathy? No, it's just their counties. Look at the percentages. In Embu, only 4.3 percent vaccinated. 4.3 in Nakuru. 4.4 in Taita Taveta. Mombasa, 4.8. Like Kipia, 4.9. Compare that with Nyeri, 11 percent. Counties in uptake of second dose. Nairobi leads with the highest proportion of population fully vaccinated at 13.7% and Marsabit is the least with 0.4% of the population of Marsabit. 53% of the vaccinated with the first dose were males, 47 are female, 54% of those fully vaccinated are male, 46 are female. You seeing those percentages? I'm seeing the percentages. So there's a if you look in the distribution countrywide There could be very many things. I'm actually me choking it down to logistics. Yes. And availability because if you're still putting it at a health center and you expect that people will come for it just because it's at the health center. If there is no information and that's a question that we asked Dr. Hwale here the other day. If you don't go out saying, you know what, vaccine is available here, mm. here, here. Come. We are running a camp today. Come. I don't think it would hurt to do this in the way in which polio is done for example taking for door, children yes yes door yes. to door yeah taking it two by two it wouldn't hurt it really wouldn't because the infrastructure is already there mm. it's already known how they've gone about it how they've done it you know i don't think it would hurt because just like you're saying if you you sit there and wait because we also realize that these vaccines have se- have a shelf life right yeah Uh, you sit there and wait thinking that people are going to come right now there are 7.5 million vaccines available in the country 4.5 of those have been administered so you have about 3 million just kind of sitting there waiting yep. hope that people are going to take them before they hit their expiry date and mostly you you'll find that the government is actually relying on the other partners mm. remember the faith based health facilities and the private health facilities because you'll see a lot of these campaigns going doing the rounds from uh, either church saying there's going to be a vaccination drive at this church on this mm. Sunday on this day or a faith based facility saying there's going to be a vaccination drive come and find it do you see anything telling you the government is actually saying on this hospital yeah exactly but you see what happened when the faith based did this that weekend there was a jump in the number of vaccinations that were that were yeah it happens missing, every week you know and mm. they keep doing that there's always that jump So yeah, take it to the places where people are. But you know it's you the say, government that's relying on everybody else. The yes. government is not doing what it should be doing because this should be led by the government. We yeah. should be seeing this on TV every day, hearing it on radio every day. Thank vaccine, you. vaccine. You know when you say apathy, eh? <laughs> it would mean that even if you brought it to their doorstep, mm. please let's do the news first. Let's do the news. Yes. And then we can t- continue with this. Good morning. 7 a.m. Spice up your life. The latest news from around the world. 94.4 Spice FM. This is new to him, Dennis Aceto. President Uhuru Kenyatta is intent on lifting the curfew soon as well as announcing his preferred presidential candidate Uhuru who was on his way to Sagana State Lodge ahead of the Mashujaa Day celebrations tomorrow also urged Kirinyaga leaders led by Governor Anwar Iguru to unite and work together to achieve faster development. Tunamshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa kutupatia uwezo wa kuweza kuyatimiza. Tumeweza kuyatimiza kwa sababu ya amani ambayo tumekuwa nayo, kwa sababu ya vile tumeshirikiana kama viongozi, kuhakikisha ya kwamba tumebadilisha maisha ya wananchi sio tu wa Kirinyaga lakini wananchi wa Jamhuri yetu ya Kenya. Na hayo yawezekana tu watu wakiwa pamoja na siasa zetu zikiwa siasa bora, siasa za kujenga sio siasa za kubomoa na kuchafua. 
na hayo yafanyikana ama yatendeka kwa sababu ya kazi sio kwa sababu ya maneno Governor Anna Waiguru thanked the president for development projects implemented by the national government. Production of tea and coffee in the county has been on the rise. In the coffee value chain, following intensive training in areas of disease and pest control and correct application of fertilizer, we have recorded an increase in production from 27,878,778 kilograms produced in the year 2018-2019 to over 30,947,490 10 kilograms produced in 2019-2020 Deputy President William Ruto met with 700 delegates for various positions of the UDA party in the coast region where he assured them that the nomination process will be free and fair he also said that no one will be issued with a direct ticket The nominations in UDA must and will be free fair and democratic There is nobody who will be given a free ride there is no direct nomination going to nobody unless we have only one candidate. Ruto has further warned candidates who use violence to win primaries that they'll be disqualified and their tickets issued to other candidates. Violence must never be part of the equation of UTA. Violence will never be part of the modus operandi of this party. We want reason, not force. We want ideas, not hooligans to be the basis upon which each one of you will look for the candidature of UDA. I have said any candidate that uses violence in UDA will be disqualified. ODM leader Raila Odinga says that he'll announce a running mate after he has made his presidential bid announcement official. Odinga spoke to radio stations in Meru County also says that he has no problem picking a running mate from any tribe as long as they share the same vision of achieving development projects. He further says that his Azimulo Moji campaign is aimed at uniting the country. <laughs> The ODM leader also said he would make sure his candidate would be a person they'd be able to work with throughout his entire time in government. Sitaki wafuasi, nataka wa shirika, tunaenda pamoja. Sio vio, sio vio zaidi ya tinani ya utaweka hapa. Kuna hata kuweka hiyo mutu, hiyo mutu peke yako, tumoja wezi kusaidia watu pande hii. Hata ni kiweka mmeru, ni kiweka mkikuyu, ni kiweka mkane, mkamba, mluhi ya nini. Asaidi watu, ili kitu mimu zaidi ni hile ambayo itapanyika kwa hiyo watu wakati chuku tuwa kwa serikali. Chief Justice Martha Koma says the Supreme Court is prepared to handle presidential election disputes should any arise after next year's general elections. Koma, while speaking in Karen, where she presided over the launch of the Kenya Judiciary Academy campus, said that she, however, hoped that the general elections will be peaceful. We are prepared to the tooth and nail on how to deal with any dispute that would arise, including the use of technology, telling everybody the hero of dragging a house full of material, boxes and boxes that nobody looks at, should come to an end when we get everything delivered to us technologically. Through technology, we can be able to access all the information from every polling station and we can be able to make an impact. 4.5 million Kenyans have so far been vaccinated against COVID-19, the Ministry of Health says. Of these, 3.3 million have been partially vaccinated, whereas 1.2 million have been fully vaccinated. This now brings the proportion of fully vaccinated adults to 4.5%. Meanwhile, that three people tested positive for COVID-19, placing a positivity rate at 0.9%. 93 people have recovered from the disease and one patient has a camp with another 587 admitted across various health facilities. Facilities. This is Newswire. I'm Dennis Aceto. Spice FM Nakuru.
All right, so a few minutes after seven o'clock, let's see what it looks like on the roads this morning. Building up on Mombasa Road, but of course, the crazies are not out today, so that is great. Inbound traffic, a little bit here and there as you get towards Cabanas. But for most parts, Mombasa Road looks pretty good and it is moving in both directions. Where it slowed down considerably is Langata Road this morning, getting out into the city, uh, the roundabout there. Bagathi Way also free and clear as you're going towards the city. Uhuru Highway, however, has piled up quite some, getting to the Haile Selassie Avenue. We're also looking at Haile Selassie Avenue, quite packed, coming in from Landis Road at the Kamkunji Roundabout. So in both directions, uh, Haile Selassie is packed today. Jogo Road also right around the train station, heading out then towards Botella and then towards Landis Road. The roundabout there at City Stadium. Um, that has built up quite some as well. Ngong Road here and there towards City Mortuary Roundabout, out then towards Community, and then into the city again as Haile Selassie. Let's take a look at Thicker Road. Well, looky, looky here. It is jam-packed. Outering, feeding onto Thicker Road is quite heavy. So we're looking at inbound traffic all the way to the Pangani underpass. Not a fun place to be at right now, but you're going to have to have some patience. This morning, we'll take a look at what it looks like shortly. Don't forget, coming out of Westlands, where it's already packed right now, use the Red Hill Link Road to get yourself out in order to come back in. Spice of MKE on Twitter. Text on 40127. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latif. Agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room, the only okay. way to start your eight day. eight minutes after seven. It's Kenya's biggest conversation. It continues into the second hour. We are here until 10 in the morning. And C.T. Muga has the day's Kalenjin proverb. Yes. Korom. Korom. Getundo. Mm. Omo, ome, are kiki. Okay, do it again. Korom getundo, omo, ome, are kiki. Okay. The lion can be strong, brave, and fierce, but it doesn't eat its young. The lion can be strong, brave, and fierce, but it doesn't eat its young. No, it doesn't. Okay. Let's just go with what they're saying. It's okay. Mm, we will just go with it. But uh, having watched those documentaries, <laughs> we know different. All right. There are many people who are online, by the way. I think let's just say hello to one or two. Okay. Paul Omariba says, good morning. Uh, good morning to you too, Paul. Obadia also tuned in. Uh -huh. And Oliver Waukunda, I'm assuming he's tuned in from Ukunda uh, this morning. Um... Mutuma Marimba says, tell Kenyans kuna soda or ka allowance. Trust me, Kenyans will turn out in numbers for the jab. Mm. Unfortunately, there are indeed a lot of myths about the vaccine. Good morning, people. Always a joy to be tuned in from Tigoni in Limuru Highlands, a place I want to go. That's where Ndungo is. Lim Tigoni. He says it's freezing. Sure, it sounds you great. can walk there, Ndu. To Tigoni? Walk I mean, we can hear what you say about Nanyuki. Surely, Tigoni is just here. Yeah. Those are the two places I have, I must go. Take a doozy. Take a what? A doozy. <laughs> peng. <laughs> peng. A doozy is a peng. Peng ting takes a peng. All right, take motorbike. a motorbike. Sheesh. You guys are like the DPP's office. In the very beginning. That's great. <laughs> 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 but uh, Tigoni can be cold. Yes. Uh, it, it sounds so appealing, though. It's It's green. Uh, Lots of tea. I want to go. It's actually lush and beautiful. It's a very I want beautiful place. To go. See, it's you guys are not beautiful. helping me now because you know we are helping you. It's a very beautiful place. Oh. Yes. Mm. Tomorrow is a public holiday. Go. 
I will be here. Remember the place that you were told by the governor of Kiambu County? Yeah. Tigoni Waterfalls. Yes, he said it. Lovely place. Mm. Go. Okay. All right. So, Mutuma is saying, give Kenyans, tell Kenyans it's tea or there's soda. Something. They'll come out. And they'll come for the vaccine. Yeah. But then there's also something else that Victor is saying. Note the word fully vaccinated. Mm. AstraZeneca takes like three months before you get the second jab. So, we may be having more percentage than what we have, is being given to us. We may be having more people who have taken the first jab. Now they're waiting. They for time for the second job, but they've already done the first job. We do have more people who've taken the first job. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is true. But you could still have more people taking the first one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> According to what you read early on, yeah. of all the people who've taken the jab, yeah. thirty-five percent are fully vaccinated, and sixty-five percent of that number are the ones who have only received one jab. The first. Yes. yes. But it's progress. It is. But the issue then of uh, the myths and all and communication and people getting to know Nairobi, people will, you know, share information on uh, social media platforms. You'll get to know. So there's the vaccine is available at this particular center today. Um, churches are very active on these private hospitals are more in Nairobi. They're very active also when they are doing a vaccination drive. They will share out information and say, come and get your job at this particular place. It's constantly being shared out. All right. Now, the issue, though, is how do we address the information about it? Hmm. And the government had said, we're going to use the local community influencers to share this information. That's what they said. Are we seeing that happening on the ground? Are we hearing that if you go to any part of the country, the local chief, the local pastor, the local uh, community elders, Nyumbakumi, are talking about, guys, let's go get vaccinated. It's happening on this day at this particular place. Actually, no. the, has that been rolled no, out? No, no. The whatever the government says, mm. unless they can assure us that indeed the vaccines have been cascaded to not just to health facilities in local areas, then you can talk about apathy, because mm. it means it's readily available, it's close by, but people have chosen not to. Mm. But so long as it is in sub county centres, it's not a question of apathy. It is people determining what their priority is. And the vaccine is not going to be a priority. Yeah. And the reason is because going for that vaccine will also compete with the resources that they have and that they need for everyday life. So, anyone who's ever conducted any outreach mm -hmm. will realize that the reason why you have these uh, medical camps is because it's long been understood that you need to take whatever aid you want to the people, then yeah. they will come. Yeah. But you wait for them to come to you. If it's men, they'll be coming when they're on their deathbed. Mm. Right. Mm. I think a lot more needs to be done. If truly the goal is to have the majority of the population vaccinated by a certain date, then clearly there's the deliberate action that needs to be made. Yep. This thing of sitting and saying, okay, because people, number one, understand the dangers of not being vaccinated. Number two, because people understand that COVID is dangerous and you don't want to get it. Or that uh, you are... Uh, you, are risking being hospitalized with major symptoms if you don't. The assumption is there, and assuming that people understand those three things and then will come to you and get vaccinated, I think, unfortunately, is a, a dangerous place to be. Uh. If truly the goal is 10 million, if truly by 2022 you're seeing a majority of the population having been vaccinated because you know it is important to protect them, yeah. then it is more than important to take deliberate action and take it to them. Make sure... Let it, I'd rather that it be apathy. You see what I'm saying? Mm. I'd rather that everything had been done. The most remote health center in wherever has, and they're waiting for people to come and take. You'd rather say, as terrible as it sounds, folks, you'd rather say they were here, we, wanted, we had brought them to people, they didn't come, it, they expired. I know what, let me tell you something. Kenyans, okay, no, I don't want to use the word trust their government, but Kenyans will listen to their government. Mm. Yes, they will. If the government actually came, that's why people don't have issues with the polio vaccine. They never tell you, oh, you know, my child will not grow up well, my child will. No. If the government just came in with that drive and said, this is the local chief, this is a ward administrator, and this is the local health uh, care worker, and they're saying, here is a vaccine, come for the vaccine tomorrow, people will queue up for that vaccine. If 
they were on the ground. People will stop having those questions. Many more people will actually be turning up to the health centers for vaccination. Yep. And this is the job of the counties. That's Health is devolved. And that's why we're speaking with the chair of the CECs for Health countrywide. And you're saying, you know, we are increasing the number of centers. Yes, increase the number of centers. Are you going to use, and you ask them, City, are you going to use the uh, community health workers in this drive? Yeah, 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 we're using community health workers. Where are they? <laughs> you know, that's what they keep saying, mm. but they are not. Um, I remember I was involved in a certain research project. It's called Sustainable East African Research on Community Health. Uh -huh. It is the research project. It was being conducted in Uganda. What's the acronym for it? Sure. Such. Yeah, yeah, it has to have such, something. Yeah. Such. Sustainable. Sustainable East Africa Research and Community Health. Right. Such. Mm. Okay. Wow. Uh, Western Uganda, Mbarara, Kenya. Mm. Okay. It was in Migori and it was in Suba. Mm -hmm. Now, the understanding was how do you determine the best way in which you can actually administer antiretrovirals? Mm. Okay. Do you wait to test the viral load? Or do you just test and if someone is positive, you start treating? Mm. Okay? Now, the findings of this research is what led to the test and treat that we now have. Uh -huh. This particular research. Okay? Now, but if you just went out and told people, we just want to test you to see if you're HIV positive, they'll tell you, go away with yeah, it. I'm not uh, interested. Yes. You want to know whether I'm, I, I, I'm not. I, I'm not interested. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, what, not, I'm not positive. Yes. So what, <laughs> what the research project did... Uh it was like a fully-fledged medical camp, uh -huh. meaning they would test you for almost everything. So it's, a, it's like a mobile hospital right. that will be in that region, not necessarily one specific place, for something like 12 weeks. Okay? Pima Sukari. You those. name it. School children come, you check. Mm. You, you, everything, and you document it. Uh -huh. Biometric system and everything. People came. You know why? Mm. You are next to them. People who had been lost to follow up, meaning people who had come for treatment and put an ARV disappeared, you mm. couldn't find them, mm. reappeared. Because we made it easier. That's the point. Because when you talk to them, you would understand why it is. It's not that people do not want to have health care. Mm. But the resources required for seeking health care, as I said, are the same resources that they need to survive on a daily basis. Yeah. So we're talking about basic survival. Yeah. Yes. Food. Shelter. Yes. Now, you, you balance that against a vaccine. They are not going to go for that vaccine. Mm. Yeah. It's not that they don't think it's important. No. But they don't think it is a priority. Now, if the government wants people to actually get vaccinated, they should stop talking about what they're going to do and just do it. Just do it. Just go down to the people and just do it. I think also there's, a, there's, there's what we call, what we describe on this show as government attitude. Mm. Government attitude is, ah, we still have time. We are doing well. We started with getting about 35,000 people per day. Now we're doing about what? 80,000, 90,000. 80, 90,000 90, people per day is not a bad number. We're talking about countrywide. It's not 80, 90,000 in one village. No. It's 80, 90,000 countrywide. So there are some areas where there is a very low uptake. If you think about like what uh, Dr. Ahole was saying, a county like Kakamega that has a possible population of about a million people who should be getting jabbed and only 2,000 have received the jab. Then sure. you ask yourself, okay, so what is it? Why do we have such a serious gap? Mm. It is because of availability. And it's the same. It's attitude of, well, attitude by Kenyans of, well, the, the vaccine is available. I'll get it. And then the government itself, okay, Kenyans will come. They'll know about it, they'll come. Eric, you know, mm. when you say attitude of government, mm. even attitude of Ministry of Health, getting ARVs to people who needed them, again, was a struggle. Uh -huh. According to government policies, in the days when you have a provincial medical office of health, they don't know, let the patients come to the hospital, say, uh, excuse me. This, let the patient come to the they're not going to come. Mm. Why don't we just cascade this and take it to a clinic in, says, no. But they're this, but, I said, but they're health workers then, they know what to do. Yeah. But they don't train. So we will train them. <laughs> what do you need? Let's do it. So we've even trained lay people to understand what needs to be done. It's not complicated. Mm. Now, the reason why you hear that Kenya won this fight 
or why Kenya progressed well with HIV is because at some point it was understood you have to take this help. You, you have to take it. You have to take it to the people. Yes. You, not waiting for them to come. They will not come. Mm. Now, there's ample evidence to support that perspective. And with COVID, so long as the government has it at some sub-county sub headquarter and they're waiting for people to come, they will not come. Yeah. We have Lawrence on the line. Good morning, Lawrence. Yes, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I, I told you I worked with the community, community in Madari Islam. Yes. yes. Yeah, and Korongocha. And now most people still believe that there is no COVID. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So I, I agree with one of you that, uh, I mean, there should be awareness. In fact, that's where the, the rain started business. Mm. The government did not create, create awareness right from the start when COVID checked in. So you find that even when they announce those numbers, people say, no, but you see, we've never seen them this night testing us. Mm -hmm. Or they think there's, there's, there's COVID. We've never seen them. Anyway, I've also not, I've not, I've never seen them, but I believe there is COVID. Mm. I have never seen them testing people, but I, I believe there is COVID. Mm. Because have I you, know of some of my friends. Yes? There you go. So does the community know of people, their relatives, people in the, in the community who have either been hospitalized or who have died because of COVID? Okay, you see, the problem is most of the, most of the people who die, okay, mm. some of them have lost their relatives yeah. I mean, uh, from other diseases. You know, uh, maybe COVID, COVID might have manifested itself, I mean, uh, in, in those diseases. But mm. the problem is some of them die even without going to the hospitals. Mm. So that's where the problem is, even without getting tested. So there is a, there is a lot of... Uh, mistrust and i think the government should have done uh, awareness from the word go mm. and even now when they they are doing vaccines vaccines they should i mean create awareness yeah. to tell people that there is uh, the covid and covid covid is fatal people should uh, get vaccinated now the problem is they are not doing that i've never even seen them using the community leaders to do that if i've never seen them and, not uh, at all only, you... yes not at all so it, during this vaccination drive you haven't come across, yes. you know, community leaders, the local leadership, the chief, the ward administrator, or even the local radio station, say, in Korogocho, Koch FM, for example, talking about vaccine drives. Not at all, not at all. They, mm. they, they have never done it. The only, the, only, uh, the only place I saw was, I mean, they, they, they were, I saw some poster somewhere. Uh. And that was, I mean, they were telling people to go and, uh, I mean, get vaccinated, I mean, in some some school but now the problem is how many people read those posters right. most people don't read those posters so yeah. the government should do much much more okay in terms of awareness because people don't do not believe that they don't trust in their government that there's covid in fact they are saying now oh, this is okay the government is, is using covid as a cash cow <laughs> <laughs> thank you lawrence <laughs> thank you have a nice day <laughs> you too lovely day omar in kinango good morning Good morning. How are you guys? We're fine, fine thank thanks. you. Yeah, um, regarding the issue of uptake of COVID-19 vaccine. Yep. We just need to be serious. Simple. How? Um, you cannot think the same in this pandemic era. Mm -hmm. As in, health facilities are there, yes. But suppose we took the vaccines to the Matatu Terminus. Uh -huh. Suppose we took the vaccines to campuses. Suppose we took the vaccines to, to the mosques. Yeah. Suppose we, we, KRA came up with some collaboration with Ministry of Health mm. that when you're filing your taxes, Mm. That that file shall not be considered valid till it is accompanied by a, 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 a COVID nineteen vaccine certificate. Are you saying, Omar, that uh, you haven't seen any of that? For example, in Kinango, have you come across any vaccination drive, let's say by uh, by religious leaders, by community leaders, county? No, not by religious leaders, not by county. The vaccines are at the hospital. I went and got mine. Mm. Mm. At the public hospital? At the public hospital, but the dose is, 
nothing more than a hundred doses. Mm. So if you are one or one hundred and two of you, the two will have to come two mm. days after. Mm. So on any given yeah. day, they only have a hundred. And are, are people having to register or rather book in advance to come and get vaccinated? Yeah. Or can you just show so, up? Some, no, you don't just show up. Hmm. Vaccination is on Monday and Thursday. Okay. Yeah, so it's, and that is Monday 100, Thursday 100. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So we need to change our thinking. At mm. least make it mandatory for any person to do any transaction with government. Mm. For you to appear in a public office, you should have that certificate. People will do it. Nigeria did it. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Omar. Welcome. Asante sana. Mm. Well, even as he says that, uh. Uh, is, is, isn't that what we are seeing? Because realizing that the protection of the people is paramount here. And saying that, all right, if we're going to sit and, and hope people will come and then they don't come, we've seen different incentives, some a little bit more hard stance than others. Yep. So we've seen some incentives in the United States, for example, there have been cash incentives for people to come out and get vaccinated. Because on the long, in the long run, it is for, you know, the protection of the people. But then we've, al we've also seen a little bit more of a hard stance in some of the European countries, France, Italy. You don't have a certificate, for example, in Italy. You cannot eat in a public place. Yep. You cannot attend a public gym, a you public remain park. In curfew. You stay at home. <laughs> and then France f suspends workers in the public sector who've not been vaccinated. So mm. you're staying two weeks without pay, right? Our government Go did get the same vaccinated. with, a, with, a, with a, a public workers. But you see, our issues are even more different, uh, mm. deeper than that. It's about don't do like what the government does, force people. Give people the information. Mm. You have not even started with that. Lawrence and Omar, one in Korogocho, Nairobi, the other one in Kinango. Mm. None of them has seen any government communication saying this is where the vaccine is taking place. And remember, we are talking that we are being told apathy, and here you're hearing the numbers are limited. Yep. So somebody goes there and doesn't get you think they're going to come back tomorrow. Yeah. To and and they and they took the time to come. This is it. They, they will have to plan maybe why are they just not readily available? You know, I remember I was at one government uh, establishment. Uh. And I was talking to one of the leaders, the people who were heading that team, and I asked them what the problem was. I was talking to people around there. They said that the day before the there had been no vaccines. Mm. He said that the problem is that he's not that there are no vaccines. The mm. vaccines are there. Somebody else hasn't bothered to go and pick them. See, now when you tell me things like that, I, I don't know how to, I can't. There's a, there's <laughs> a, pro to go and there's a problem on both sides. Yes. Mm. There's a problem on both sides. There's a problem on the one side of somebody is has refused to come and pick them. And there's a problem on the, this person who has them saying the vaccine is available. You may find the person who has supposedly refused to come and pick is not even aware. That they're there. That they're there. The last time they had checked, there they were told nothing. they haven't arrived yet. When they arrive, we'll let you know. You've they arrived. Know. They did not let the person know. And then you sit here with them and say, how could you kuchukua? You didn't tell them. Isn't there's a whole problem could be anywhere in, along that the, chain. Yeah, the whole Actually, the, the it, chinks it, could be many, not yes. even just mm, one. Mm. It could, but in this particular case, it was uh. actually very interesting uh. because they knew the, uh. they had they'd been told the vaccines are here. Uh -huh. We have br we've brought this first batch, uh -huh. but from now on, you're going to come and collect them, uh -huh. and you collect the ones you need. They are still waiting for the vaccines to be brought. Oh wow! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think there's a and when you ask the yesterday, here. the vaccines are finished. Mm. When Eric says there's a certain attitude and apathy, the apathy is in government, not with people. Not with the people. No, no, no. The, 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 the attitude about what the government thinks is adequate communication, the attitude that the government has thinking there's adequate uh, facilitation, that's where the apathy is. Because it's clearly inadequate. Mm. It clearly doesn't meet the required, or it doesn't uh, measure up to what is required. Now, mm -hmm. if it doesn't, then the apathy that we're talking about mm -hmm. is with the people who are supposed to ensure that these things happen. Yeah. Yes.
Let's take a break, take a look at the traffic and weather, and then we continue the conversation. It's half past seven in Kenya's biggest conversation, the Situation Room broadcasting on Spice FM around the country, Nairobi, Mombasa, Kisumu, Nakuru, Orodoret, Nyeri, and Malindi. And we are also countrywide and global on Spice FM KE, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and www.spicefm.co.ke. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Spice up your life. 24-7, around the world, non-stop. This is Spice FM. The opportunities are here. Project X, the biggest youth empowerment project in Africa for young creatives, is here. Are you a model, a fashion designer, or a performing artist? Then this is the opportunity you have been waiting for. Register now for the opportunity of a lifetime by following at Opportunities Are Here on Instagram and the Opportunities Are Here on Facebook for more information and the registration link. Online selections begin on the 12th of October and registration closes on the 22nd of October. The Opportunities Are Here is a project by the Ethical Fashion Initiative in partnership with the European Union. Project X is co-produced by KTN Home and Vibes Radio. There are so many people peddling what is false and that it bears remarkable resemblance to what is true. Politicians have their agenda and their agenda is to use every opportunity to sell that agenda and to loot this nation. I have seen major strides that are done in this country when we talk to each other as against talking at each other. We start getting back into the tribal cocoons which were put to us by the colonial powers. You know, they gave us physical freedom but not mental freedom. We're still mentally colonized today into these cocoons of tribe. Now, if you live in an area where it's difficult to find a dog... <laughs> He's a goat. I kid you not. In which part of this country is it difficult to find a dog? So, so that you result... <laughs> special. All right. So the weather. At cloudy conditions in Nairobi this morning. We'll see highs today of 24 and lows of 15. It's mostly sunny in Nakuru at 15. Highs of 26 and lows of 14. 15 will be the low in uh, Nyeri where it's raining at 16. Highs of 23. Eldoret, sunny conditions at 14. Highs of 24 and lows of 13. And in Mombasa, light rain in some parts at 26. Highs of 30 and lows of 24. Malindi is... Also raining in some parts at 27, highs of 30 and lows of 25. Kisumu is partly sunny at 21, highs of 28 and lows of 19, while in Kakamega it's partly sunny at 20, highs of 28 and lows of 16. Kampala is sunny at 18, highs of 27. We will see sunny conditions at 23 in Dar es Salaam with highs of 30 and lows of 23. Um, Johannesburg, 8 degrees and cloudy, highs of 19 and lows of 8. While in Lagos, it's mostly clear at 24, 30 will be the high today. Kinshasa, rain showers at 24 with highs of 29 and lows of 23. up your life okay so we're in the middle of traffic hour officially and we're seeing quite a lot of it on the thicker super highway this morning mombasa road of course has its morning dose of traffic today we're looking at in and outbound traffic just a little bit now think about it at the diversions where there's an issue imara daima then just the uh, before that around cabanas and then after that towards general motors that's where you have a little bit of traffic there's a bump in the road here and there but it's actually not so bad we're not seeing red like we did yesterday where are we seeing red however is on Langata Road. It's actually quite slow. Uh, Uhuru Highway is moving very slowly, especially after the Bunyala roundabout going towards Haile Selassie Avenue. Coming in from Kamkunji roundabout, Haile Selassie Avenue has its own fair share of traffic right now as well. In the CBD, quite packed as well. Jogo Road is following in fine form, as is the Thicker Super Highway, and we have traffic spilling over way past um, the drive-in today. 
wow. Kiambu Road also adding to that. And traffic coming off Limu Road is a wow factor right now. Let's talk in a bit. Spice of MKE on Twitter. Text on 40127. Let's try and keep things moving this morning. up your life mature intelligent talk every morning spice up yourself uh 24 minutes to eight uh so yesterday the ibc released a statement okay and this was this is what the statement was saying this is uh, the opportunity to once again update the country on the status of the national enhanced continuous voter registration exercise for the second week ending 17th of October 2021. So they, by the end of the second week, according to their target, remember their target is what? Six, Six million, million new voters. Mm. A, week a, month. Is, a month is four weeks. Yes. That means second week, which is halfway through, they should be at the halfway million. mark. Mm. Three million. How many have they registered so far? Out of a target of 3 million, they have done 491,968 newly registered voters. That is a whopping 15.47% achievement of their target. Molimu, is that a pass or a fail? Uh, that one isn't even, it's not even an F, it's a Z. <laughs> <laughs> Sakulit, don't even see me. Go bring your parents. Mm. <laughs> don't see me. Come with your mother. In fact, no, come with your ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong. Don't see me. <laughs> so this is how much they have done so far. Now, if we look at the counties and how the counties are faring, okay? So, for example, Mombasa County has achieved a week two percentage achievement of 11%. They've only registered so far, they've registered uh, uh, 190,000. Kwale has done 21%, Kilifi 20%, Tana River 24%. Now, let's look at the high heavy heaters. Garissa 26%, Wajia 28%, Mandera 28%. I will go to the others who are uh, 30%, West Pokot, 31%, Samburu County, uh, other top ones, 26%, Baringo County, another top one. I'm looking at those ones that are above 25%. Narok County is at 26% as well. Okay. Now, uh, ask me a county. Which one do you want to run? Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Nairobi is number 47. 12%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, that's huge. 12% is a very huge number, but it, it's against their target. Oh. It is 12% of their target. Mm -hmm. The target was that week two, they should have done 43,000 people. That's what they did, 43,000 people on week two. But the target was on week two in Nairobi that they ought to have done 366,000 people. Okay. They only registered 43,000 new voters. The total target for Nairobi is to have 732,000 new voters registered in this one month. Mm. They have only done how many? 43,000. The ones that we are saying are looking pretty good at 30% and 35%, for example. 35% is Tukana, which the total target for the four weeks is 62,000. They have done 10,000. The target for this second week by week two was 31,000. Mm -hmm. They have done 10,000. We've registered 10,000. Good. Not quite good, right? No. So the IEBC is basically saying, uh, you know, guys, uh, come out. We applaud the various leaders and political parties that have been on the front line of mobilizing Kenyans to register as voters in solidarity with the commission and appeal to Kenyans across the board to join in the voter mobilization drive. Now, if you look at those numbers, do you feel as if there is that, again, apathy? Or is just that uh, lack of interest or is it ah kuna time mm. i think it's a combination of factors mm. uh, that's for sure i don't think that uh, again we talked about uh, with with ambassador koki here mm. we talked about you know uh, civic education vis-a-vis -vis voter education 
and if because what you're trying to do is move things a significant number from where they were before, yeah. right? Six million, whereby over the last couple of over the last few elections, you've been around that fifteen million, nineteen million. It's never really gone uh, beyond that significantly. Mm. Now you're hoping to have a significant jump, mm. right? Six to seven million plus. So what is it that you're going to tell people that is then going to make them... Is it that you have some people who've now reached voting age by virtue of the fact that they can get an ID? Yes, yeah. you have those. Now, are you going to be telling them about the importance of their vote and why? Or are you just going and saying, random, just come? Or are you giving this with some information? You know, I think there are many things. Okay, so why should it be important for me to vote? Okay, so again, I have time. See, they said... A month. Mm. And we're only in week two. Mm. We have some time. I'll go get it done eventually. Uh, I'll change my polling station. I'll do this, that, the other thing. I never really regi regis registered before. I'll get it done. I think there's a combination of factors playing out here. However, to be able to take those, put them together, and then, again, it's the same thing we talked about vaccinations. Be deliberate in your efforts. Not assuming that because you've said there's voter registration and we've pitched a tent here, you're going to assume that people are going to come in throngs to come and register because you've said not going to happen, my friend. Let me ask you, the two of you, have you come across a tent, voter, voter registration drive, mm. where? Kilimani Primary. At Kilimani Primary. Mm. So you've seen and it. At St. George's. You've seen them mm -hmm. at, at the areas. And at, you've seen at, the, at, the, at the entrance. At the entrance. There's a tent and says, I mean, this is where they've... It's they, not it's, a it's, tent, it's an umbrella on the table. Ah, like those ones for the internet guys. Mm. Okay. So there's an umbrella table. There's 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 presence. There's presence. And then and, and then they have put some posters around. No, it's a huge poster. banner. Banner. Mm. That's the word. Yes, telling you here. Voter registration. Um, mm. Have you seen one? Ndu? Where there usually was, there used to be a road, but there's oh. no road. <laughs> so I. So you haven't seen. I have not seen. You haven't seen any. No. Maybe the question we should be asking then is that: Have you seen and are people coming? Have you? Do people know? Are people aware that this is the, is there and it's happening? Yes. Every time I pass there, I'll see one or two people. One or two. Yes. Just that one or two. See, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. With a target in Nairobi of six hundred thousand people, when you find a center has is getting one or two. This is these are both in Kilimani. That's Kilimani Ward. That's mm -hmm. uh, Dagorichi North constituency. Mm -hmm. So we've seen politicians coming out, you know, recording social media messages and saying, "Go and register as a voter." We have seen a uh, information being done by politicians, mobilization. We expect at some point that politicians are actually going to do the actual mobilization of people to go and vote. We have also seen reports of areas where politicians are trying to dissuade some people from going to register as voters while encouraging others to go and register as voters. What's happening on the ground? What's the headline in the star? The headline in the star, mm. no incentive, voter apathy hits Mount Kenya. Okay. Mm -hmm. The law is a shocker for a region known for posting high turnout in both voter registration as well as voting. Okay. Mm. Mount Kenya counties, let's start with Meru, a target of 229,000. So far, they've registered 15,000. That's 13 percent. Tarakanithi, with a target of getting 69,000 new voters, they've registered 4,200. Embu, with a target of 100,000 new voters, they've registered 4,000 new voters. What are the other uh, Mount Kenya counties? Uh, Nyandarua. Here they are. Nyandarua, 109,000, that's a target for new voters, they've registered 4,000. Yep. Week 2 is a 9%. Nyeri, 148,000 new voters. They've only registered 5,300 by week two. Moranga, Kirinyaga, 113,000. They've registered 6,000. Uh, Moranga, 191,000. They've registered 7,000. Kiambu, 353,000 is a the target. They've registered 15,000. <laughs> is that apathy? Is that lack of interest? Is that just thinking, well, we have nobody to vote for. <laughs> People vote for president, so we don't have a presidential candidate. We have no, nobody to vote for, so we are not going to vote. I think it would be interesting uh. to find out why these numbers are low. Mm. Mm. Why are people not registering, not yes. going out to register yes. as a voter? I am somebody who is actually interested in changing my vote. Last time, 2017, I voted in Machakos County. I want to vote in Nairobi County in the next election. I have not gone to transfer. 
one of the reasons I haven't seen where. Okay, many others, but the, it's not constantly in my face, mm. reminding me that I need to go get this done. Mm. I know there's a month. I don't know when that month ends. You know the these numbers represent mm. young people who over the last five years mm. have attained the age of eighteen yes. and above. Okay, so. The question that I would ask is, what is it that would make a young person want to get an ID a national identity card? Mm -hmm. Let's start there, okay? Mm -hmm. And having gotten an identity card, what is this thing that would incentivize them to want to, to actually vote, and, to look forward to it? Mm. Many good questions. Pause. Let's have. Let's speak to Millicent, who's calling from Nairobi. Yes. Good morning, Millicent. Good morning, Latin. How are you today? I'm fine. How is Siti and Hindu? Very well, thank you. We are you. very well, thank you. Millicent, and how are you? I'm okay, thank God. You're doing a good job, as always. Thank you. My thank favorite you. trio. Thank you very much. I just much, wanted Millicent. to contribute, Karibu. Mm -hmm. I wanted to contribute Kidogo about what Hindu was saying mm -hmm. about the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Actually, people have a different views of the effects of vaccine. And my... my I, re I remember my own, this, my sister actually, I was encouraging her to go get the vaccine because we just lost our mom out of COVID the other day and uh, we were trying to encourage each and every one of us to go for the vaccine. But mm. to find the same, same sentiment that Ndu is saying that I still want to get children. Mm. And uh, I think the government needs to come up again and try to enlighten people of the importance of taking the vaccine. Mm. Mm. Because uh, what people think out there, because uh, the hearsays are so many and they are distracting our minds and we are like, ah, I don't need to go for it. It has this effect and the other. Yeah. Okay. And another thing that I wanted you people to maybe advise, maybe you discuss it and I missed it some time back, is that when you go for the vaccine, because I've taken the two jobs, but I've never received a single text to show that I got the job. Hello? And that means I can't get the certificate. Yes. So I, I don't know how to go about it and to just verify that I really took, took the job. When, in case maybe in the government when you went to get the job, were, were you registered? Yes, I was registered. I was registered. You, mm, they took my details. If they took your details, um, and how mm. long ago was this? The first one I took it before June. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The second one I took it uh, just the other day in uh, May. Ju me, me, okay. me. The good thing is that you're mm. in the system if they took your details, and there's always a follow a follow up channel to be able to find that about uh, to find out about that. Uh, if you're then sure of the dates that you took it and uh, the center where you had the vaccination done, uh, so long as they took those details, you should be all right, and then you can do a follow up. But then also, I remember having taken the first vaccine, the first shot, mm. and I think I got mm. my text two months later. Yeah, I remember how long yeah, it took. Yeah, it took a long time. We're just for sitting us to there get that asking one. ourselves. CT got the job uh, ahead of us by a few minutes. Yeah, he got his text <laughs> ahead of us by a few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll probably so get it. But the good thing is that M. Chanjo, M. Chanjo is getting better and better by the day. So mm. you, you would be able to follow up. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Millicent, he mumbled with Sorry, I'm you just know kidding. You know me that I think they're in different centers. I understand. I'm I'm just just Millicent, did you did you get the vaccination at the same center? No, one is, was in Baghdad, another one was just in the Tarambe house. You know, it, it doesn't really matter because mm. the um, mm. system is same. Yes, the the, the 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 yes. I'm worried because people get even the notification of getting their certificate and everything, but personally, even that simple text. I think what, what we'll do, Millicent, mm. is yes. uh, is uh, I'll take the liberty of volunteering. Undo. What? <laughs> I don't <Thank> understand. <laughs> <laughs> to take this matter oh, up now. with Dr. Muloa. Yes. <laughs> oh God, no. On your behalf, my sister. <laughs> Do Dr. Muno is listening, so of course he knows that he'll he'll be receiving a message from Lou <laughs> shortly. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch. Thank you, Millicent. Okay, thank you. On the on the voter registration, I think people have lacked, uh, relaxed a bit. I don't know because of the past experience. Mm. Even mm. I'm sorry to I'm guilty as sad that I've also not gone for the registration. Mm. You've <laughs> never voted. I think, no, I voted before, but I've not gone. 
Kwani is it for registering new yeah, yeah, yeah. voters? If, if you if you voted in 2017, you're, you're already right. in the register. You don't need to. But unless, I don't have the, the, the Or are you planning card. to vote twice? <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't have and, the voter's card? No. You never need a voter's card anymore. Okay. All you Thank need you. is your ID. I love you guys. Have a blessed day. Cheers, Thank sister. You, you too. <laughs> Juma in Mombasa, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. I just want to say something about yeah. the vaccination. Uh huh. There's nothing in in Mombasa. These health experts are not helping us understand mm -hmm. how we can go about it. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm in, I'm 45 years old, and I already have three three beauty health conditions. Mm -hmm. Um, there are drugs I've been taking. I'm, I'm saying, which I if I need to stay even for a day. I've been troubled. So what I'm what I'm afraid of, mm. they're not telling me how the vaccine will affect me considering what considering what I'm already going through. Mm -hmm. So my brother went there, he was not asked any question, he just went for the vaccine. Mm. So to a person like me, I'm afraid. I have to be assured that whatever I'm going through will not be affected by the vaccine because I'm already sick. All right. What are they telling you yes. when you go to the hospital? When I'm when I go to the hospital, the, no questions. They just take they just want to take the details and get vaccinated straight away. Yes, so so they, they don't have any form of assessment of someone's health. Have you have you talked to a doctor to seek um, you know information on this? I've spoken to my doctor, man, but the doctor tells me. Uh. It's up to those there. The nearest facility people are getting vaccinated is Coast General here in Mombasa. Mm. They are the ones who should run the test, see if you qualify getting vaccinated at that time. It's interesting that you say that because we've also seen other messaging coming in saying that, you know, those with comorbidities, those with pre-existing conditions are the ones who are being yes. encouraged more than anything to be vaccinated because without the vaccination, then you're setting yourself up to... Um, infection. It's interesting that that is happening, whereby the other messaging on the other side is to do the absolute opposite. That go ahead and get vaccinated because of the fact so I don't have that you have this. Because I re I'm already on drugs. Right. I'm already on drugs. So anything coming into the system has to be compatible with already. But, what I, is, but I must what ask you, I have to ask though, yeah. is this your own fear yeah. Or are these things that have been confirmed by your no, medical doctor? This, it's your own fear. This is my own fear. Right. Yeah. Okay. It'll be good. It'll be good, uh, Juma. Go speak to a doctor and yeah. share share these fears and ask them. So, what what is the situation? Because then the okay. doctor would be able to explain to you and give you the assurances that you need. Yeah. Yeah. I can, think just. Can, can I just say something? I'm yes. Go to... ahead. In Mombasa, mm -hmm. there is water, there, there is apathy when it comes to registration. Mm. Many people, my younger brother and sister, are saying there's no point of going to to, to register as a voter. They're saying they are, the will of the will of the people is normally not respected, so they don't see any any reason why they should register. And they say mm. any government they elect fails them. It's like people have given up on their civic rights. So there's apathy. It is, there's apathy. Mm. The, the clerks are just idle, browsing their phones. They have no work. That's interesting. Thank you very much, Juma. Let's hear from uh, Peter in Riro. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I want to contribute on the issue of voter registration. Uh -huh. mm. um, now, my... My take is that uh, two things. Uh, number one, yes, like Juma is saying, the issue of apathy is 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 quite widespread mm. uh, because the, 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 where IBC wants to reach out, um, the population that is essentially, um, w I would probably say, uh, the, the most sufferable mm. at the moment. Mm. Um, these are people who have left school recently, they're probably looking for jobs. Um, and then COVID, COVID came. Yeah. Mm. So 
um, when they look at the reasons for voting, and the reasons for voting are to bring leadership that can assist them, and they most likely are not seeing it at the moment, mm -hmm. then and, um, the, there is that lack of interest, of course, to, to go and get the votes. Mm -hmm. and then the other reason, I think, would be the, the question of IBC's budget in, um, on uh, uh, voter education, voter mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. We always assume that you know, voter education, once it's done in one election cycle, then everybody seems to understand it. Um, if we are trying to reach out a population that has just turned 18, um, five years ago they were probably uh, 13. 13 years old. Yes. Yeah. So um, when it comes to whether they understand what voter education is, it's essentially bits and pieces of what they have heard from their relatives or what they have seen flashes on television or yep. on other right. you know, platforms. So, so, hmm. so in my view, the 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 IBC needs to increase its uh, advertising information uh, dissemination uh, budget That's um, and target actually the online digital platforms, mm -hmm. especially. If they, are, if they are going to be able to bring this uh, group of people uh, on board. That's true. Thank um, you very much, Peter. Thank you. Thank Have you. Mweni, are you in Tala? Are you in Nairobi? Or are you in, well, why was she saying that she... Game. Game. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Mweni. <laughs> I'm in Tala. Okay. Now, about COVID, eh? mm. I'm surprised about those comments about uh, uh, epathy and so on. Eh? Mm. Um, here, here in Tala, things are so smooth. Actually, I live deep in the village. And I remember hearing vehicles mm. coming and informing people mm. to go and get the jab mm. quite a while ago. And um, <clears throat> this, something that happened uh, during the, you remember when uh, the COVID um, uh, thing had chattered so much, mm. there were some infected people in the village. Mm. And I noticed the, the nearest um, health facility called Nguluni. Mm -hmm were not bothered in monitoring. So I actually reported them to the county government. I came to know somebody who is in charge, the person in charge called Virginia. Uh. There's a reason why I'm telling you all this story. Do you know when the judge, I reported her, so she was uh, quite scared. Mm. Do you know when the judge arrived, she called me, when he come and get vaccinated? <laughs> yes. So I went and the place was parked very packed with the youth. I decided, I told her when the, 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 the number base just called me. Of course she didn't because of course it's my duty to go. Mm. Then the other day I went to visit a lady in the, in the rural area. Then uh, she told me, Allah, could the these people notify you when you're going to for the second job? I was so uh, encouraged. So yes, she received an, a, a, a message. Yes, people here are so well informed. Mm. So yesterday, I was at another, a shop, it's not even a shopping center. There's this gentleman who knows my family, and then I asked him, hey, you, where are you, where are you from? I, I saw you lighting from a car. Mm. I mean, also, I'm getting a job, the job. Right. And then I asked him, which one? Tell me, J&J, in the village. Another young man there commented, oh, do they have Moderna? People are informed. Yes, they are, so they're yep. so informed. In the village, I'm talking about a village. And you, and you have yet so, to come across somebody who has fear of what the vaccine could do to them. There is nothing like that here. I think the the communication has been very effective. Mm. So let me confess, since I haven't received the job myself, uh -uh. when they <laughs> when and now you're going to report to the person again, to, and yet you're the one. After this very eloquent Christine, you, 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 you <laughs> end up I telling was, us you have not been vaccinated. When, among those surely. Things. I was for the J and J. So when he told me that the J and J is available, <laughs> uh, I am now. I'm calling you from the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> I so am going. Well, well, you go get vaccinated. Thank you for calling, Wendy. Have a lovely have a day. Have a wonderful day, guys. <laughs> Cheers, you too. Good morning. Day. It's eight a.m. <laughs>
has issued inform P. Lyco is a holdings with the tender to print ballot papers and other important documents such as voter registers. The company defeated 11 other companies including Al Gurai who were involved in the 2017 elections. According to IEBC chairman of Ola Chibukati, the tender has already been officially awarded and that during next year's general elections, the commission will only print ballot papers based on the number of registered voters. In the ongoing registration exercise, IEBC has registered 499,098 new voters over a two-week period, a small number compared to its expectations of registering 3 million new voters thus far. Now, as preparations for Mashuja Day celebrations continue, a Kenyan Stephen Kariuki Mugai is hopeful that he will complete his 200 km trek from Nakuru County. Kariuki hopes he'll be given an opportunity to attend the celebrations to be held in Kirinyaga County tomorrow. This despite the fact that the government has already limited the number of attendees to only 3,000. According to Kariuki, he is optimistic that this time his efforts will be recognized. <laughs> Kariku previously walked to attend the swearing in into office of President Uhuru Kenyatta says he uses the opportunity to remind Kenyans of the hardships freedom fighters went through when fighting for independence. Now, the number of students who have registered for this year's KCPE and KCC exams has risen to over 2 million. Official data from the Kenyan National Examination Council shows that 831,026 candidates have registered for the KCC exam, while another 1,225,603 students have registered for the KCPE exam. These as candidates in 162 schools will have to take their national examinations in other schools after the said institutions failed to meet the requirements that a school must meet, must have rather 40 candidates dates before the exam center is officially registered. New government policy through the National Examination Council NEC has affected 24 secondary and 138 primary schools with most of them being private schools. KCPE exams will start on March 7th and end on March 9th next year with the KCSE exams starting on September 28th to April 1st. The Director of Public Prosecutions has dropped graft charges against nine accused persons in the Aror and Kimwarer corruption case. In a new application filed in court under a certificate of urgency, the DPP produced a charge sheet that has less nine people who had initially been charged alongside former Treasury CS Henry Rotich in the scandal. The prosecution wants the court to consolidate Rotich's case with that of former KMVDA boss David Kimosop, who had been charged in a separate file. According to the application, the consolidation will reduce the number of suspects from 18 to 9. In an affidavit by State Counsel Alexander Muteti, the DPP says the consolidation of the charge will also result in the reduction of the counts from 40 to 30. Muteti argues that consolidation was necessary as two cases arise from similar facts and circumstances and therefore will not be prejudicial to the accused persons. Now, the body of a German citizen is expected to undergo an autopsy examination. Wesi Close Armin is reported to have been in a relationship with a woman named Rose. Mary Wangui with whom they were living together in Nyeri County. According to a report submitted by Wangui, the man had threatened to stab her with a knife, accusing her of having another boyfriend and forcing her to flee. However, when she returned, she found him locked in a room and upon breaking the door, with the help of the police, found his body hanging. Emmanuel Rotich, the boyfriend and main suspect in the killing of athlete Agnes Rotich, will be detained for 20 days pending completion of investigations into her murder. Rotich was arraigned before an attend court where he appeared before senior principal magistrate Charles Kotua but did not take plea. The prosecution sought 20 more days to hold him in custody, which the court granted. The suspect is detained at Eldoret Police Station. Kotua also ordered a mental assessment to be done before the case is mentioned next month. This comes as Tyrone burial arrangements are ongoing as she is said to be laid to rest on Saturday at a parent's home in Chesunet village, Nandi County. To sports and Patrick Vieira said Arsenal's late equaliser was really tough to take as his Crystal Palace side were held to a draw in a thriller at Emirates Stadium. Alexander Lacazette scored deep into injury time to deny club legend Vieira a winning return, pouncing after Palace failed to clear a corner and Gabriel Martinelli's effort was saved. The Gunners started brightly and led deservedly through Perik Emerick Aboumeyang after Vincente Guaita's diving save to deny Nicolas Pepe. 
but Palace improved as the Gunners faded as Christian Benteke continued his good record in games against the Gunners with the equalizer. This is Newswire, Dennis Aceto. One hundred two point five Spice FM, Kisumu. All right, we are officially in traffic hour this morning. The CBD actually quite packed coming in from Gong Road. We also have quite some traffic coming off Langata Road uh, today. All right, Aerodrome Road was clear before, and it's like a dream. It was like a dream. Now it's a nightmare because traffic all the way from Langata Road then now packed on Aerodrome going towards Uhuru Highway. Uh, we're also seeing Haile Selassie Avenue uh, coming in both directions and the thicker superhighway, my goodness, coming in from Outering and uh, Kiambu Road as well. Quite packed, smack dab in the middle of traffic, and it's looking like it's going to be this way for some time. Also looking at Mombasa Road inbound uh, to the cities where we have a bit of a headache. Uh, apart from that, doesn't look too bad. Limuru Road also joining this circus. And uh, don't forget, you can use the bypasses. Southern bypasses uh, performing really well today as is the Red Hill Link Road coming out of Westlands. Use that. North Airport Road, I can't say much about. Outer Ring also looks uh, good, but it's packed. The Northern Bypass also, and Eastern Bypass looking good. Let's take a look in about half an hour and see what it looks like. But we are in the middle of traffic. I want to keep things moving this Tuesday. Spice FM KE on Twitter, texting on 40127. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial in the room we have ct muga researcher academic seasoned political observer a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times ndu oko nigerian by birth kenyan by choice communications expert pan africanist a truth seeker and believer in people power and eric latin Agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the situation it's room. It's eight minutes after the eight. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. It's the situation room on Spice FM online and now on KTN Home for the next one hour. City Muga has the day's Korom. Yes, Korom. Etundo Omo Ome Arek Kiki. Read again. <laughs> Korom, uh -huh. ngetundo, omo, ome, are kiki. The lion can be strong and brave and fierce, but it doesn't eat its young. The lion can be strong, brave and fierce, but it doesn't eat its young. Yes, the National Geographic that you two have been watching, <laughs> or Geographic Wild, whatever it's called, <laughs> I think has lions Killing the young. But this is mm. what I said. I couched Th this in that information. I said this, that they don't eat them, but they kill them. That's for sure. Mm. There's a threat of a young male coming and taking your position as the older male. Mm. No? Mm. Mm. Even in human beings today, you still mm. see the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Even mm. in politics. Even in politics. <laughs> Lion will finish its young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our guest this hour is Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja who is in the Situation Room. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you in the studio, Senator. It's really amazing being here. Very beautiful studio. I've always wanted to come. Mm. But I think during COVID, we were mostly doing the calls. Mm. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. I was here an hour early, just waiting at the parking. Very oh. good. Come in here. Just to come in here. <laughs> just to come in here. <laughs> Welcome. It's a great There's pleasure. an ad if I ever had one. <laughs> Now make sure you cut that up, uh, Brian. For the <laughs> next promo, we have it. We have it already. No, for you, you guys do an amazing job. I think this is the only you, you, you've created a space, the only serious show in the morning on radio where we discuss issues, very sober discussions, very considered views, thoughtful. It's not just entertainment, you know. And I, and I think that's a space you've carved out for yourselves very well. 
It's great to be here. Do, do you now understand why I'm voting for this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Eric has it been stating it. He's been telling us. Oh, yes. He, he's always man. <laughs> he's, he's filled our ears with it. <laughs> We've heard and heard and heard. He says, you know, me, I am voting for Kabisa. So, welcome to the hot seat. Asante. All Asante, right? sana. Um, we, we want to discuss a number of things that are happening in the country yeah. and particularly Nairobi. Yes. Devolution in Nairobi. Do we have an Nairobi County government? We do. Senator. We have an Nairobi County government. Um, it, it, it was not in its best state mm. a few, like a year or some ago. And um, there was a need to invoke Article 187 of the Constitution to transfer some of the functions. You remember, there was a court ruling. I would say if a governor is you know, under investigations, he cannot hold his office for that period. And our governor had no deputy. So a lot was not happening. The planning department, a lot of approvals, things that need executive signing off by a governor. So we invoked 187 to transfer four functions um, to the national government. There was a, a deed of transfer mm. that was to last 24 months, meaning it's running out as well. Two months to the election, it will revert to the county. So we still have Nairobi County government. Um, there were attempts to kill it and to kill devolution in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I remember during um, BBI, the first draft of BBI, um, the proposal was to make Nairobi the capital and not a county mm -hmm. as other counties are. Mm -hmm. And many people accepted and thought that's the best thing to do. I resisted it. Um, and very strongly. I even One. went to the BBI secretariat with some of my MPs, gave, made a presentation. And for the following reasons. Number mm. one, devolution is one of the highlights of our constitution. We always say it's the best gift we've given Kenyans. Nairobi has 10% of Kenyans. Do they not deserve that gift? They deserve devolution. Mm. Because devolution is, you know, fiscal decentralization and power. Step down to the people. That lady in Mutuini needs to have someone that she has chosen and who can be accountable to her to provide for her, her medical care. Um, you know, all of us, when we're talking about transport, we're talking about water, we need that level of accountability that's close to us, not at the national level. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, look, you don't make Nairobians pay the price for two people's mistakes. Mm -hmm. Just because Kidero didn't get it right and Sonko didn't get it right doesn't mean Nairobi can't get it right. We can actually make Nairobi work. And I explained... Because there was the argument that look at Washington, D.C., um, it's the capital, it's not a federal state. Mm -hmm. Look at Canberra in Australia, look at Abuja in Nigeria. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And I took them down history. Mm -hmm. There is none of these countries that converted their you know, bustling economic capital into an administrative and political capital. They didn't do that. They moved out. They created one. They created. If you look at D.C., mm -hmm. that was the Residence Act of 1790. Mm -hmm where um, Virginia and Maryland donated land and said, okay, for this, for the state, you know, uh, to have just a neutral territory for all the states, let's create Washington, D.C., right. along the Potomac River. Mm. If you look at Canberra, again, New South Wales, that, that was, I think, uh, 1908, yeah? They donated land, and they had legislation as well to create... That's so why if, if you go to Abuja or Canberra, they even look almost artificial. Right. Wide streets... <laughs> the buildings are a certain height. In D.C., you can't build above the Washington Monument. So I said, if you want to do that in Kenya, let's not look at Kenya just as it is now, 50 years from now. yeah. Let's go to Isiolo, or let's get some place at the, at the center and develop a administrative and political capital and let it grow. You know, I, I like what the people of um, Tarakanithi did when uh, we were getting into devolution. They couldn't agree on Chuka Town mm -hmm. or the other side because it's, it's a bit, you know, vast. So they sat with a map and a ruler, and they went to the middle, Kadwana. And they said, this is going to be the capital. <laughs> and for the longest time, the biggest office in Kadwana was my TNA party office when I was chair. Mm. And now it is, you know, there's an economy around it. They said, Nairobians deserve devolution. We need to make it work. Mm. And I believe we can make Nairobi work and make Nairobi work for us. Mm. Yes. With the, with the transfer of these four functions, then yes. uh, essentially to the NMS, uh, right? Yes. Do you think that we've taken steps back? We've, 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 we've made progress, but also we've taken some steps back. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain it in this way. Um, number one, governance and leadership is more than just about brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. It's about livelihoods and lives. 
There's a reason why, for those, I don't know if City reads the Bible. I do. Was, you've come across it? I do. Come across the Bible. <laughs> I've come across that book. Yeah. <laughs> but I come across it every morning. Oh. Yeah, exactly. That is nice. I love that. I love yes. the Bible. If you look at the story of the Israelites, when they said they want a king, and the prophet was sent, I think it was Prophet Samuel. That's first Samuel. Yes, was sent. And God tells them, tell them that if they have a king, this king will tax them. This king is going to take their children. They said, no. We, we want, want a, a king. king. He sent them again and said, it is not you they are rejecting. You know, it is you. It is me they are rejecting mm. as, as, as God. Mm. But they said, we want a king like our neighbors who you can touch and feel, who you can hold to, you know, who you can see. Mm. So what, what NMS has done, yeah, it is almost, it's like a machine. You'll see pavements being done. You'll see, you know, buildings being done, hospitals, but you also will see demolitions. You won't see an empathetic face. Mm. You'll not see someone you can call to a town hall mm. and tell them, no, even not Nataka or Jerry or in, uh, you know, Dagoretti, this is what we want. So mm. people are actually missing that. And there are certain things that they've, they've, they've done that are too mechanical. And, I, and, I, and now I've taken them to task. I have a number of questions in the Senate. We've had so many demolitions of people's structures without telling them where to go to. Mm -hmm. A governor, a human face, someone elected, because when you elect me, then I'm accountable to you. But when I'm appointed, I don't care about, I mean, I'm, I report to the president. I'm mm -hmm. a military officer, mm -hmm. you know. So you've moved it from civilian rule. Those people, if there was a governor involved, before I move you out of Westlands market, yeah, you remember like that triangle, which is now still empty, yep. two years down the line, mm -hmm. yeah. I would think of another place and relocate you, yeah, or agree with you on how you can be compensated, and I'll think about your livelihood. On top of just a road, I'll see the faces of the children affected. I won't come to Kariubangi and move 8,000 families during COVID. No, I will not do that. So there's an empathy and compassionate aspect that is, that is missing. Number two, the ability to oversight the NMS mm -hmm. has gone down. The county assembly members are extremely afraid of asking questions. So you have no questions being asked in the county assembly. The only person asking questions now is myself at the Senate. That's why every week, if you look at it, there's always an issue. I asked someone, must transit, today they're coming at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, mm. to the Senate mm. to respond on Dandora Stadium. I've asked the issue of tax collection in Nairobi. It is almost like we've gone back to be at all with our people. Our businesses mm. Mm. are being squeezed. We're squeezing water from a stone. You're paying, first of all, you pay almost 13 licenses. Number two, there are women being bungled into these uh, Mariamos, into mm. trucks. Like, uh, mm. uh, trucks, because of 35 shillings in the markets. Yep. I think you saw what Boniface Mwangi went through, where now they're walking around with the GSC officers to collect business permits from mm. the people. It is, it is, it's unheard of. You but all those things that you're it. saying, yeah. Senator, look, even with the transfer of functions from yeah. one uh, unit of government to the other, yeah. there's still political representation and political accountability. Ideally. It goes to the national government, yes, but yeah. the national government is still a political organ that mm. is accountable to the people who yeah. brought, brought it to, our, to power. So I see maybe you're talking about other failures, failures in oversight by various other levels, and specifically yeah. by the county assembly, because transfer of the function does not mean that that county assembly yeah. is no longer responsible with its oversight. You see, on, on paper, and I've told the MCS, on paper mm. in the Katiba it says when you transfer a function, the constitutional um, responsibility for that function remains with the level that transferred it. Mm. That is on paper. But today, I assure you, uh, Asante Sana, I was going to bite it, but I realized on camera. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> you know, today, if you, if you, if you ask them, mm. you know, what level of oversight, if, if you ask the governor, the acting governor, who is there right now, yeah. uh, what is the situation? And he says, oh, no, please, go ask him. Go him ask him. Thank you, because of that fear. Let me ask you this question, Mashimiwa. Yeah. What is it that these people are afraid of? They're afraid of political repercussions. People are afraid of asking questions. Everyone wants to be politically correct. That if you, if you question, and I always say, when you question the government, it doesn't mean you're against the government. In mm -hmm. fact, you're probably a good friend of the government. When you question. But people think, oh, if I question them, I'm questioning the president. No, you're not. Even the president wants to know that what he's... He has a, he, he, but he has these a, are elected leaders. We, I think this last parliament, not just the county assemblies, this last parliament, in, you know, with a lot of respect to my colleagues, has failed Kenyans by trying to just pander to the whims of the executive in many respects, in many ways. You, they are told to jump, they say how high. You put it politely. Don't say they, say we. Not we. Latif, uh, Eric, if you... I mean, You've I have, said this last parliament. You're I have, a member of that parliament. So yes. if you're talking about the institution, then take collective responsibility and no. say... 
We <laughs> as parliament have failed Kenyans. Parliament has when failed Kenyans. When we are told jump, yes. we ask how high. No, I don't. Mm. I am one of the few in government mm. who has taken on the government more than 10 times. Remember the revenue debacle. Mm. Um, many issues I have spoken against excesses by the government, despite being in government and considering the president a good friend. Because I know he also doesn't look for psychophones. Now, those who may not know him assume that the more you just uh, clap and uh, praise and pander to him and pander to his whims, mm. then you're helping him. You're not helping him. Mm. So I cannot say we. I can say parliament in its entirety. But many times I have stood with many other colleagues, you know, on many issues mm. for what is right. You remember, I mean, last time they withdrew um, the deputy president's uh, security. And I still said, no, this is unnecessary. Mm. People thought, oh, now you've moved and you're supporting the deputy president. I said, that, is, that has nothing to do with anything. Is this the right thing to do? Even in the last parliament, before, before handshake, remember, mm. when they tried to deny uh, former right honorable prime minister his retirement benefits, I said, no, you can't tell him to retire from politics. We're, these retirement benefits are not for him mm. being a politician. They're for him having served as prime minister. And I was the only one who stood mm. on that. Remember the security laws. I stood on that. Remember October 26th, when uh, Honorable Lodge was being beaten up. I stood to protect him. When Babu Wino was arrested. So me, I, I, do, I, I can separate issues. Supporting government is not being a psychophant. It's just objectively looking at what the issue is mm. and standing for what is right, no matter who's in charge. So that's what I'm saying for Nairobi. Um, you know, the, the, the in, all, almost intimidation, and it's not overt intimidation, but this transfer has left a huge vacuum in terms of accountability. Look, you have transferred functions to the national government. National government is primarily oversighted at the National Assembly. Has there been ever a question asked to them in the National Assembly? No, not even one. Yet their budget is done there. The accounting officer mm -hmm. is actually the status controller mm -hmm. for NMS. You know so what I, I believe I believe they, they have good intentions. You know what they Gen say, Senator? Yeah. They say that a senator is the baba or mama of the county, yes. right? You, as even when you were going to present the case for Nairobi yeah. and uh, opposing the removal of devolution in Nairobi, yes. you rallied your fellow MPs, yeah. the members of the National Assembly, and you said, let's go together as a unit yeah. and present these issues. Have you done the same in terms but of you know, rallying them and saying, guys, yeah. let's protect Nairobi? Ask these questions in the National Assembly. Let's look at how much uh, budgetary allocation is going. Let's yes. look at everything else. Yes. As the father of the county. Let me tell you, number one, even that, that presentation, I had to really cajole a few of them to come. They came. But remember after that, there was a meeting in Naivasha where it was uh, those who support BBI to go through. Mm -hmm. and, I, and we were told to go into our county caucuses. So in our caucus, I remember very well saying, please, let us make a case again to the president and to the former prime minister or Nairobi mm -hmm. to remain. Do you know I stood alone? They said, no, not a comma. You can't touch a comma. Ultimately, the president and the former prime minister understood and they accepted and they removed that. Problem. Anyway, BBI is now gone. It's done and dusted. Mm. But I have, as, as recently as last week, mm. I had uh, five of them in my office. You know, I have 17 MPs. Five of them came to my office. We agreed on certain things, certain legislation, including the school feeding program, which we started with Moshimua KJ in Dagoreti, mm. Moshimua Theori in Mbakasi uh, West is also starting it at Moshimua Yusuf, where we were feeding kids mm. in, in, in the schools mm. through CDF and uh, an organization called Food for Education and many other things that we, are, we have agreed to, to work on together. But of course, at this time, many of them might think about their politics. Maybe their brand is different and uh, they, they might not want to... Uh, you know, look like rubble rousers. Mm. My, me, my, my brand in my, in my Rebecca Tari, if I don't do it, people will say I'm pretending I should <laughs> just go on doing what I do. I just remain a sakaja and say the truth. So, yes, I've asked them that we need to. And in the beginning, General Badi was very, 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 you know, every week he'd come and give me a report. He was told by the president to do that. Mm -hmm. he'd come, he's on 24th floor, I'm on 26th. He'd send me a brief. I think that time when we had the revenue debacle, he was all a channel and Kwanza. And later mm. on, I told him, boss, you know, you're not a, me, I'm a politician. Mm. Today we'll be upset with each other, or we may not see it while with the prime minister or the deputy president, but we'll talk tomorrow and it's over. You guys don't hold grudges. Let's, mm. let's get back to making Nairobi work mm. for Nairobians. That for me is my mantra, and that's what we must do. Nairobi must work. Mishima, in your opinion, would you say that the formation and the enactment of this NMS has been useful to the county of Nairobi? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, NMS has done an amazing job. And I've said in many respects, they've done a good job. Look, planning, physical planning had stopped. You know, people are not getting approvals for, for buildings. And for you to get an approval, you are to more or less part with money. You know, that is done, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. That is done. We've seen improvements in many roads, especially in Eastlands. 
um, and and even the model of how we do the roads. Mm. Now we are doing our own, you know, you know, B two men and whatnot. The the factory is now operating. Contractors are getting less of what the county should be able to do. Remember when you used to have Department of Works and all that, yeah. So mm. that is working to to a great extent. Mm. Garbage collection started well. It's a, it, it's not going on very well um, as we speak. Mm. And I have not seen a plan on the bigger issues. And that's why I raised the issue of water. Mm. You know, the solution for water in Nairobi is not bowsers mm. and boreholes. What about those boreholes? In fact, I'm glad you mentioned the boreholes. Yeah. The boreholes have been touted as a major, major, major development in areas where there are problems with water. You see, you see, a lot of these areas are problems with water um, because of lack of a social connection policy. Mm. Yeah. So, number one, the physical infrastructure has been, uh, how, how do I put it? It's been interfered with, right. so people have blocked the actual val the physical valves, mm. and the ones doing the water business. Mm. So when you put up this, I remember in the first hundred days, and a mess had done around a hundred of these boreholes and high water, you know, high tanks, and we went around to the president opening some of them, yeah. and one inch was supposed to get them for free. Unfortunately, now a good number of them are not working mm -hmm. because of the contamination of the water table. Mm. Number two, some have been taken over by people around there and they're charging on NG. So that's a question they're coming back to answer. Mm. But that is not, the solution for water in Nairobi is not boreholes. It cannot be boreholes. No. It, is, it, it is two things, and I was speaking about it in the Senate the other day. Number one, we need to make sure we have the correct quantity of water coming. And that's why this Northern Collector Tunnel program is extremely important for Nairobi. The quantity, just mm. the physical quantity of water, the millions of cubic uh, meters we, we require. Mm. But then number two, we must use technology. A lot of the infrastructure must be overhauled. You know, we still have the old piping. And I gave the example of Kileleshwa. A lot of those railway, you know, former railway places, yep. Upper Hill, ETC, that infrastructure is different from what the county infrastructure is. Yes. You need to overhaul it and put in technology. Where, and I'll give you an example. Before the last election, there was an area somewhere towards Kasarani mm. where there's only one guy who knows where that thing is closed. Towards the election, he comes <laughs> and opens it. He comes and opens it. But, you know, if you have scared of technology today, as governor, or, or God willing, inshallah, if I'm governor next year, I'll just look at my phone, and I know it is Langata up and or someone has, be able to has closed it. You need to use that technology. Let's now, you cannot do that with Nairobi county budget. That's why we need to think creatively on how to finance this. Let's take a break and look at then what needs to happen. 27 minutes after 8, Kenya's biggest conversation takes a break on KT and Home, Spice FM and online. In the studio on the hot seat with us this morning is Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja. Keep it right here. We'll be back shortly. This is The Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Spice up your life. If I'm found guilty, there is no problem I'm willing to serve. I have no problem. Jails are meant for human beings. They say a society gets the leadership it deserves. Mm. If you have a corrupt, crooked and rotten society like we have in Kenya, then of course they will get that kind of a leadership. I think the president should dissolve parliament. That's the best solution at this moment in time. Dissolve parliament. All of you go home. Yes, we all go home. How are we encouraging other people who might have new and creative ideas Young people who are making money without any government help. They are just buying their own bundles. They are going on TikTok and making money. KRA is coming after them. Mm. I've been in parliament for 15 years. We have been unable to pass the gender law. And yet no presidential candidate is talking about it now. Because we are fake. The truth is all the men refuse to vote for that law. What did Sonko do to Pumwan from Maternity Hospital? Yeah, he with cleaned his it own up. money. Cleaned it with his own, own money. money. That was him as an individual. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I did not say he was cleaning his own money. I was saying he was cleaning. He cleaned. His <laughs> Foot, mouth. Foot, <laughs> mouth. Eric. <laughs> okay. The Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation. Sunny conditions in Nairobi at 17, highs of 24 and lows of 15 today. Uh, sunny conditions in Nakuru at 17, we'll see highs of 26 and lows of 14. 15 will be the low in a rainy year today at 16, highs of 23. And Eldoret is sunny at 16, highs of 24 and lows of 13. Still raining in some parts of Mombasa, 26, highs of 30 and lows of 24. And we're looking at rain as well in Malindi at 27, going to highs of 30. We'll see lows of 25. Kisumu is sunny at 22. We'll see lows of 20 and highs of 28 while in Kakamega. Sunny at 21 with lows of 16. It'll go to highs of 28. Sunny conditions in Kampala this morning at 20. Highs of 27 and lows of 18. Dar es Salaam raining at 26. Highs of 30 and lows of 23. 
Now, Joburg at 9 is cloudy, highs of 19 and lows of 8, while in Lagos it's mostly clear today. At 23, we'll see highs of 30. Rain showers in Kinshasa at 24, highs of 29 and lows of 23. Spice up your life. Okay, we're doing what? We're not going to Huru Highway today because everybody's already there, guys. Um, you might want to wait until later to get onto it because it's absolutely jam-packed. There must be something going on there. Aerodrome Road and then connecting with the Bunyard Road roundabout. Uh, we're looking at incoming traffic from the city. The construction throwing this all into one big circle of mess. Okay, so it's not happening on Huru Highway today. If you can't avoid it, do. We're also seeing that joining with Haile Selassie Avenue on this side coming from Gong Road. Uh, and also on the other side coming from the Kamkunji roundabout, which, by the way, is absolutely packed. Feeding off from Landy's Road today. So all roads lead into the CBD and it's quite messy today. Looking a little bit better on the thicker superhighway, but not quite yet, just yet. Uh, coming out of Westlands as well. Use the Red Hill Link Road, guys. You're better for it than uh, staying on Waiakiwe this morning. Also, the Southern Bypass looks good coming off of Mombasa Road. The bypasses are your friends. Use them today. Let's talk on Spice FMKE on Twitter. Text on 40127. Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 28 90. minutes to 9, Kenya's biggest conversation. It continues. This is a Situation Room on Spice FM, KTN Home and online. Siti Muga Nduoko, Eric Latif and our guest, Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja. We are talking about safeguarding devolution for Nairobi. And looking at City, you had asked whether the senator thinks that NMS has yeah. uh, you know been of any benefit to the county. And you said an emphatic yes. Oh, yes. Yes, it's been of benefit. Better, better than... It, than if we had remained without NMS, better than the better the than, than a county administration would have done. The administration better than the administration which has transferred functions to it, mm. um, and ex had explained the challenges they were going through mm. um, at that at that point, and I've given examples. Um, they, they came and filled a gap. There was a gap um, in terms of planning, in terms of the you know the psyche of the you know staff in the county. Mm. Um, things that are necessary to be done are not being done. Mm. But I think more must be done now. They, they, they need to be more human yeah, in, in their approach. Mm. Of course, there are certain things you must do. If you try and convince Nairobians that I'm going to do this, you know, you will not get um, them together. But there's a way you carry people along. Last week I had um, almost 10 chairs of the former council estates, mm. um, Jericho, Woodley, you know, all these guys. And they said, look, we don't, we're not opposed to this urban renewal, mm. but we must be carried along. We've lived here two, three generations in Jeri, in Bahati, in Uhuru, and you can't just tell us that we're just going to be kicked out tomorrow. Mm. Right. They're not engaging us. They're not doing proper public participation. Mm. So the human aspect, the social aspect of it is what I think needs to be. And, and, and I participation. think, Senator, then that's where my problem with NMS would be. Yeah. Because the Constitution places public yeah. participation strongly and squarely um, on everything that the government does. There's a huge premium on public Now, if there's anything that the government is doing and it's not yeah. involving the, the public, it's not getting the public along, it's yeah. not even allowing um, for, for proper oversight yes. by the people who've been elected by the Nairobi residents to right. oversight this unit. With all those things, I, that's why I raise my questions. Yes, mm. I have seen things that are being done by the NM NMS, but I, ask, I sit back and I always ask myself my question, are we sure of the things that are being done by the NMS, yeah. by the NMS, or are we just seeing things? We're just seeing. When things. you talk about yes, new seventeen new health facilities have been constructed. Do yeah. we know about the procurement process exactly. that's going? Through? And those are the questions I asked. In fact, last week on the, the other week at the Senate, and they're coming back. Mm. I asked, "What all these facilities? Do they have drugs? Um, do they have staff?" And I gave examples. Even Bagathi has only one critical care specialist. Mm. 
Um, they didn't have nitrous, I uh, think nitrous oxide in their theater. I said, look, you can do brick and mortar, but how are you dealing with the doctors, mm. the nurses, the people? You know, because Nairobi is not just, it's not just a machine, mm. right. you know. Otherwise, it would just be, even there'd be software that could run our counties. But there's a human aspect where you participate with the people and you now interrogate. And that's interro in interrogation we're doing, mm. you know. Uh, don't think just because it's a special entity that they will escape oversight in terms of finances. Mm. No. Because they say, Mgala mu, uh, uh, Mgema kisifiwa, tembo uliti amaji. You know, you can praise these guys so much. It goes to their head. Mm. And then you see corruptions and cartels forming. And the people who tell me, look, there's a small cartel that is now forming around certain individuals who, I mean, I, I don't want to talk about mm. uh, because I don't have the documentation. But I'm getting a lot of information now coming to me. Mm. And we'll question it, not for our sake, but for the sake of the people of Nairobi. Sure. Yeah. Nairobi has always, I mean, I, I think of times even when you, you, you are on the outside looking in and you hear about uh, Nairobi as a city, and then now, I mean, as a county, the responsibility on the shoulders of Nairobi, not just for the country, yeah. but for the region, and yeah. then also for the globe, are actually quite heavy. It's heavy. So the rationale behind people saying that mm. it should actually be a demarcated area for political and uh, government administration has its merit it in does. that sense, it right? Does. I hear what you're saying then also about having a people-sided uh, uh, face Centered, to yeah. this as well. Urban renewal is extremely important. Raising economic profile of this particular city, even more important. How then do you think that you can find the nexus uh, and I create think, that balance yeah. between you, the two? You need to have a mix of it. And the Constitution talks about the special relationship that Nairobi as a capital must have with the national government. It must have a special relationship. There are certain things that Nairobi as a county cannot do on its own. Yeah? This water issue we're talking about, you'll not do it on your, on your own. You need to partner. You need to even probably do an infrastructure bond, which in Chapter 12 of the Constitution can only be guaranteed by the national government. You know, mm -hmm. you need the ministry at that place to, to partner with the, with the county to sort out these issues. Mm -hmm. When you talk about mass transit, which I think is one of the most critical issues we need to sort out. In fact, when I'm governor, if I'm to do only one thing, that's all I'll do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mass, proper mass transit system, as had been planned. We have heard If you look at our JICA plan. We have heard this from the others. Eh? But no one has had commitment to do one it. One told us it's going to bring cable cars. Who's that? Kidero. But where was the plan? See, he had it. No. <laughs> you see, the plan is there. <laughs> Same thing with you. You yeah. have a plan. The plan is there. Huh? The plan cost us 400 million shillings. Nairobi City Council paid 100. The Japanese paid 300. Uh -huh. The plan involves heavy rail, first of all. Yeah? On the biggest trunk. That is thicker road going all the way up towards Gong Road. And we have this space in the middle. If you look at the Dubai Metro, mm -hmm. you know, the way it's elevated. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about. Yes. And then on Mombasa Road, which is what should have been where, where what we're calling the expressway now. And and that's why initially I was not so much for the expressway because the more roads you do, the more people buy cars. Remember Thicker Road? Everyone said, uh, you know, this is, I mean, it's amazing. But everyone moved there. You mm -hmm. Look at Thicker Road on your traffic update now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's crazy. There's a book uh, called The Power Broker by Robert uh, Caro, the guy who um, did the biography of Lyndon Baines Johnson. It's about a man called Robert Moses and the fall of New York and how he just did roads and roads and roads and roads. In fact, he did some of the bridges so low that you can't have mass transit. Mm. And also, till today, despite the subway, America has those problems. So the mass transit issue must be, you don't have to, I mean, we have kids waking up at 4 a.m. to go to school, children in primary school going across town. That is the one thing that I believe really must be sorted. It affects everything else. But that cannot be done by a governor alone. But so that special relationship but is but extremely... But something as straightforward as this, Yeah. why does it meet with so much resistance? Because people are afraid there's no, you know, there's no vision. Number one, you feel, okay, if I touch this, I will lose people in public transport. Yeah, the matter to people. Yep. And I feel that's a very myopic view because there's always space for everyone. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because that train is not going to drop you to your house, is it? Mm -hmm. There'll be nodes around. But number two, even if you were to think about it politically, they're important. And in fact, I mean, the issues they have that I'm fighting for today about the return of the seasonal ticket to 5,000, which it had gone down to 3,000, mm -hmm. and I'm fighting for them. But, I, but look... Even if we say 20,000 Machatos have 10 voters around it who will all vote against you if you move this, that's 200,000. Why are you jeopardizing and have 3 million voters? Why are you jeopardizing mm -hmm. the lives of 4.3 million mm -hmm. Nairobians because of 200,000? There is space for everybody. These are global capital, as you've said. Mm -hmm. Which global capital in the 21st century does not have mass transit? Which global capital in the 21st century in this world do you have public transport where the only public thing is the people, is the passengers? Mm. There's nothing public. It trains, the f you know, bus fare goes to 300 shillings. It's so predictable. I have friends in New York. I have friends in D.C. Doing well, but they don't own cars. 
True. If you knew, knew that at 7 there's a train that will drop me by 7.20 and there's a 7.21 and every day it is there, clean, reliable, efficient, why would you have to own a car? That is the Nairobi one. It can mm. be done. Funny enough, the guy who did the Dubai Metro and now the, when I was in Saudi Arabia, I met him. The, now in uh, Riyadh. He's called Jojo Dongo. Kenyan. The guys who designed it. Mm. Kenyans. Mm. Why don't we have it here? The one who designed the London Metro. London yes, Metro. Yeah. The guys in charge of, so once you sort mass transit, you sort uh-huh. out housing. Not everybody has to live near in the Solaria or near where they work. Mm. People can move to the outskirts. You can go to, you know, to Kitengela. You can go all around. You create development, you know, mm. and you create new channels of the economy. Then these other issues can be sorted out. But you know where the, where the fundamental issue here is, Mwashimiwa, you and your ilk. The promises you make over time and the promises you don't keep over time mm. then creates a completely different culture in the people who should be expecting and receiving these services. No, that is true. For instance, you're talking about urban renewal, a history of issues between the city council and the tenants. Yeah. The county government comes in, all they do is inherit those problems. Yeah. So even when you tell people that this is what's going to happen, they do not believe you. They don't believe because people, you know, once bitten, as always once bitten, so many times bitten, mm. yes. people are shy. So even now this discussion, we've had this discussion with the Ministry of Transport. Yes. We've, we've, talk, we've spoken to the PS about it. And we even asked the question, okay, these public sector people or private sector people who are in transport, yeah. Is there no way of getting them to invest in this thing so that exactly. they are part and parcel of this thing? Exactly. They can have shares in the company that does it. They can own locomotives. You so can retrain some of those people. They, yes. They, 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 so they that they don't lose out. And, 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 and that's what I believe in. Yes. But you see what you need to ask them because, and that's why I'm moving away from the legislature. I've legislated too much and spoken too much. I've been an MP. I've done bills. I think last time I was rated the best performing senator because of the number of motions and even speaking time on the floor. Mm-hmm. But now I want to execute. Because you know, you speak, you speak, you speak. Is there a cup mm. they give you? Or a medal? Not even an M-Pesa. Not an extra. <laughs> 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 it would appear as though there's so much work to do. And maybe that's what uh, maybe we've been blinded by. That yeah. there's a lot of work to do. Not possible for one person to handle it. Yeah. That's why we've not made as much progress as uh, could be. Is it is it too much? I mean, you're talking about partnerships, which are ex- extremely important. Yeah. But maybe we've been told about the failures and why we've not been able to get where we should. It's because oh, there's too much. Yeah. There are too many, you know, geysers opening up here and there. You you put one out, another one yeah. pops up. Put one out, another one pops up. It's or like, is it a total like, mismanagement? It's like what is it? Cuts. You know, you saw this side, this other side goes mm. out. I think what we need to do, number one, and, and not just being, you know, naively. I keep saying I choose to remain unapologetically optimistic without being recklessly naive. Okay. We must look at Nairobi in terms of what it must be. Yeah, and do a plan look. In the next 50 years, this is how the city must be operating. This is how the population is going to grow. This is how we're going to go. Now we must own it. There's no magician who's going to come with a magic wand yeah. as a governor who will sort it. There's no one who is a water engineer and also a specialist in transport and does public finance, all those functions of a county government. But when, and you remember in 2016, now you say, I am Nairobi. Because I want people to own, let's first own our city. If you ask somebody today in Karen, uh, where do you live? You say, Oh, I live. You ask him, Where, where, where are you from? You say, I live in Karen. Mm. Or I live in Lavington. Or I live in South Sea. But there are places in Nairobi, you say, uh, someone will say, I am from. Mm-hmm. People don't see themselves as citizens and owners of their city. Once you do that, then we partner. There are many things private sector want to do, corporate. I had friends who have, uh, you know, I mean, along Wood Avenue. And they said, look, where we stay, we want to come and help do the pavements mm-hmm. and even the lighting. But the county will not allow us to do it. Why? Yet it is our city. You know, that, that attitude is That's the first thing that must why? change. the county's why? job. And because you see, there's, there's two things. Number one, if mm. you do it, there's no kickback for mm. the guy who's in mm. there. There's no contract, there's no contractor. Mm. And then number two, also, there's then maybe from the honest side, there could be you know some standards issues. Yeah. Maybe set the standard. And, 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 and who will be so you can set the standard. You can mm. come together with corporate and say, look, you, standard media group, <laughs> here is where you are. Behind you, you have Mukuru. Can you guys adapt this estate? Yeah. Mm. Let's work on two, three schools. Brand all you want because you want to do your branding. Safari comp, help me with Buruburu. Let's plant trees in Buruburu. Let's engage those young people to collect the garbage. Go to Safari comp. They are willing to do it. But when people come into office and think, okay, I'm now a one man show, yeah. I'm the Superman or Tero, I'm going to sort out the city, you will never, you will never pass. And then you try and do too many things. A proper governor of this city must just focus on at least three, yeah. then let the next administration come in. So I think those promises, the, pro- the reason why they're not achieved is one, we overpromise too many things. I've just spoken about two. We have a promise and under deliver. 
And then you guys have the pressure. Okay, what are you going to do in the first 100 days? Mm. If I'm ever asked that question, <laughs> <laughs> I just said, the first 100 days, I'm not, I'm not giving, I'm not being elected for 100 days. This is what I want us to do in 10 years. Mm. And the half we mark is this. So by the 50th, if I've not done it, then don't give me the 10. Because then you're realistic and you're being, you know, realistic. Look, this is the plan. This is where we're going. Look at our revenues for the next 10 years. What, what are they going to be in Nairobi? Mm. Can you discount it? There's so many financial instruments. Mm. Because the amount of money you need, you're talking about 100 billion, 200 billion shillings. Right. Yet our budget is like 30. But what you, mm. mean, you know, against this backdrop of goodwill, good intentions, uh, and here I'm not a naysayer saying that the way to hell is paved with good intentions. I'm mm. simply saying mm. that how then do you swim against the tide of this culture that we've acquired as Kenyans where we've made theft, we've baptized it, we've normalized it, mm. and every other Kenyan and their cousin is a thief in the making yeah. or an actual thief. Oh, it's been. Yes, it just, <laughs> the, the, what, what we, they may lack is the opportunity to steal. Yes. Now, they, 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 they call it hustling, they call it mm. deal making, <laughs> but it's theft. Let me tell you, number one, for many people, unfortunately, they are not corrupt because they have not had the chance to be. You know, it's a lack of opportunity. It's not because of their value system. For many people, it's just a lack of opportunity to be in a position where you can engage in it. Mm. I promise you. And that's why, I mean, there are services which have been done where young people say they'll do whatever it takes mm. to make money because we've glorified the thieves. We've glorified them. We want to take selfies with them. And so it's get rich quick. But what you do when you're running a city like Nairobi, for instance, number one, reduce as much as possible human interaction with cash and approval processes, automate. The person who's going to be working with me everywhere is my chief innovation officer. I remember sitting with the mayor of San Francisco, and his right-hand man is his CIO, chief innovation officer. They use technology for anything that needs to be done. Once you reduce that interaction, yeah? So if you jump a light, there's no cop who should flag you down to find you. Mm. You're in the system. The camera has seen, you're, you have to pay. It's automatic. There's no negotiating. So as little human interaction. But number two, what you do in Nairobi, you must step down the evolution to the next level. Mm. You will not run Nairobi as an entity on its own. Mm. So where I have 10 CECs, you do four barrels, north, east, west, and south. The person dealing with garbage collection in Karen cannot be the same person dealing with it in Kayole. The person dealing with Mukuru cannot be the same person dealing with the roads in Westlands. So once you have that lower level of accountability, and I know, look, this South Sea area, this is the budget you asked for. This is what we agreed needs to be done. Mm. This place will be clean, yeah? Okay. The roads will be like this. And I've stepped it down. I know who's in charge of that area. They won't tell me, oh, no, sorry. I'm dealing with. Mm. Uncle, I'll just drive around. If there's takataka there and you're not dealt with, go home. Simple. Now, once you make a few examples of people, yeah? A few examples mm. of people, then they know, okay, now we're, we're in serious business. We're serious. So yeah. that's the only way. We, know, we, we won't change people's values by just saying theft is bad. Mm. It's about systems. It's about uh, technology. And it's about giving examples. So that you know, Sakaja, you know, um, I'm going to come and read the, the question that, be, that or the comment that's been raised by Steve. But I just want to start this by when you rose to national limelight, before that, you had actually been a grassroots mobilizer. Yes. You had played in the political space for a while. Yeah. And then TNA comes and Uhuru joins TNA and yeah. you launch this, you know, vibrant campaign. And the way you're talking is how the TNA team were talking in 2013. Yes. You know, we are going digital. We forget about analog stuff. And this is how you're going to deliver. Speaking very well. <laughs> you got into parliament as a member of the National Assembly. Yeah. And now you're a senator. Yes. And you've seen the reality of things on the ground. Yeah. Now, what is it that you would say that would make you actually deliver these things that you're saying and not just making this empty political rhetoric? Now, let me come to what Steve is saying. We have heard all these stories for too long. Our political class will deliver nothing. Just let Sakaja Johnson market himself, but rest assured, nothing shall be delivered for Nairobians. Mm. This is what people are thinking. I, I we hear we you talking very well. We've heard. We've heard even at the national level. I mean, this is what we are going to do in six months' time. Mm. This shall be delivered. We shall have this. We shall be a digital economy. Our income level shall rise to this much. We shall be raising X amount of trillions per, per year mm. in revenues. No, nothing. And now you're telling us very sweet things. Mm. How can we trust that you can even deliver them? Number Let, bear in mind, yeah. cartel, Nairobi, mm. cartels. Mm. Nairobi, it has owners. Nairobi has corruption 
deeply entrenched mm. and very many interests, like you said. People in the transport mm. sector have interest. People in uh, construction sector have yeah. interest. People in real estate have interest. Bear in mind all those things. Number one, cartels is a, is a, is a, is a word used by lazy leaders um, to hide the issues. And the only way to deal with cartels, number one, is not to be part of them. And uh, there are ways of entrapment where they entice you and you join them. So you, you not deal with the cartels if you, if you talk about it like that. But let me say this. I understand the skepticism and the cynicism that comes because of failure. You know, you failed so many times. People have let us down many times. And we have a choice to make. You can choose to give up and say, okay, nothing will ever change. Um, things will remain the same. Or you can choose to actually identify leadership we can trust and believe in. So how will I do? Everything I said I would do from the time I became a nominated MP, I have done. So I have a track record. I, talk, I spoke about legislation, and that's why I'm saying I'm tired of legislating. On 30% procurement opportunities, I've done it. Government is not implementing it. But I've done my part as a legislator. The National Employment Authority, I legislated. It's there. Are they doing as, as well as they, as they, as, as are they, they should? Are they doing anything? They are not. Okay. When you talk about, uh, I mean, even in the Senate, as we speak today, we're working with the young people on the startup bill. I promised it. It is happening. It is going on. I've done my oversight work. So I cannot also be a victim of the failures of others. Because the role I have been given, of course, it is collective responsibility, but I have a role. You know, if I come here, I cannot, I cannot fire you, uh, Latif, because the tea was not done well. That's not your work. Mm. But you are doing your work there. So look at what each legislator said they would do and track it. I and made, hold them I made, accountable for ho- that. For, for, their, for their roles. Okay. You know? And when I talk about digital, I don't talk about digital in terms of sloganeering. Mm. I've given specific examples, SCADA technology. You know, I've, talk, I've spoken about the lights. Those are things that we need to do. Let's create systems that will, 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 will make them work. So we have a choice to make. We can choose to give up and say, it will always be corrupt. Let's look for the guy who we think, if he's corrupt, he'll share with us. That Nairobi will never change. But again, I say, I choose to look at Nairobi and even our country. Not in terms of how it has always been. Because that is the easier way to look at things. But in terms of how it must be. Mm. Now, what does it take for us to get it there? Mm. Are Number, you saying, Senator, yeah. that... Among the reasons why the past two governors of Nairobi have not been able to deliver on them, I, I don't think I'd be as good as I will be. Because I've learned from their mistakes. I've seen how this place operates. I've understood how the county operates. I've understood it. One, if you try to be a one-man show, you'll not make it. Hmm. You will not make it. Two, you need to have a team. You cannot get elected and then start saying, okay, who will be in charge of water? Who will be? And you have a cabinet of strangers who you've been given in terms of political, you know, posturing, you know, I mean, f- fixing. Mm. We're in the campaign together and the Nyandike, we move to Nyandike, we move to. You must have a team. The people who I, I will unveil when I'm unveiling my manifesto. The person who's written the one on water will come and implement it. The person who's been in my team understands the vision, who's been dealing with transport, is the one who will come and implement it. So you cannot, and I've seen that's a, a mistake that they've made. Mm. And number three, and I will not mention which of the two did this. Um, you must not, so... I, and allow me to share this story. One, one of them, and I was told by somebody who was working with them very closely, and they've confirmed it, that, you know, when they go in, people are like, oh, new kid in the block, let things run properly. Let us not, you know, now, you know, we don't know what's happening. They've all been in the county mm. for years. So they're like, okay, let us see how things are, are operating. One uh, contract was done. And now the guy at the top says, okay, since Kunawatu wa mefanya kazi, wapatiwe kitu. From that day, the guy could not run the county. Mm. And it's happened in many counties. Once you step down from the position of leadership and they're like, Kumbe uni muizi kama sisi. <laughs> and you're displaying it to them. You will not run this county. <laughs> Number two, you cannot run Nairobi if you're trying to be popular. You must enter with a one-term mentality. Hmm. But look, there are things that need to be done. I love enemies. People will not be happy, but let them be done. And as a leader, if you enter with, you know, that oh, let, let me make people happy to get my second term, you will not achieve anything. Well, you know, that's what NMS is doing. Yeah. They, they are but not see, trying to please anybody. They are not. They're not. Yes. Because they're, they're not going to be elected. They, they don't need your vote. Exactly. So once you come in with that mentality and you honestly have a burden for the city, many of us have grown up here, Eric, and we remember how it used to work. When the garbage used to be collected, the water bill is on, which was the bill for the garbage. The cameras, they used to come. Streets used to be washed with, you know, water mm. and, 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 and soap. Things used to operate. As a kid, when I was, from the time I was seven years old, I'd walk, it, I'd walk to and, town. And it was, was safe. Was Kenya bus. Kenya bus. In fact, you know, the first job I wanted was to be a bus driver. Because mm. I remember <laughs> <laughs> with my mom, yeah. you know, the day we stopped, remember the doors used to close. Mm-hmm. So when we stopped at the bus, you know, at the, at the bus stop, the door opened itself. And I was like, oh my goodness, that is magic. <laughs> I had to be a bus driver. <laughs> I, I, was given, I was given a talk by my <laughs> folks. But you know, Nairobi used to work. 
the, the congestion wasn't there because town was not a termination point. Mm. Number eight was number 42. You know, the Dandora bus would go to the other side. Le we can make Nairobi work. It has worked before. I believe it can work. So people can choose. It's very easy because of past leaders mm. to, to say, okay, no one will ever come and things will never be good. But then now, what does that leave us as? You know the problem? You choose to yeah. believe. But you know, you know, I think very many people who go into politics, enter politics with good intentions, like you, and the purpose to actually do good. Mm -hmm. Then they get in. And then the pressures come in yeah. because there's pressures from your political party. Mm. There's pressures from your political buddies. Mm. There's pressure from the business community. There yeah. they are all these pressures. Now, Campaign the reality sponsors. of politics dawn on you. Then there are those who sponsored you to get that yeah. and they have their demands. You see, I'm, I'm not uh, getting in now for the first time. And so I have, as I've said, track record. One, I've had pressure from political Mishima, you've never, party. You, you've never been in charge of the sort of resources you're going to be in charge of if you become governor. I was in charge of resources in the party, but not that kind of resources. No, no, no. Yeah. Even senator, you can even <laughs> say MP. Yeah. That's small change. That's but you pocket see, change compared to what governors have to deal with. But you know what resources do? They don't change someone. They show you their true character. Mm. Mm. They don't change. You, I don't think you enter politics and change. When you get privilege, when you get authority, when you get power, it shows who you truly who are. Who you really were. Who you really were. From the beginning. From the beginning. So we ought to be. That's what I'm saying. You know, it says, you know, take a care of the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves. Mm. You know, so, so that's why I can give the examples of where I've been. Why didn't I change? Right now I'd be here with like 30 bodyguards. And uh, I, I, I am waiting to have this why? conversation. Yeah, when I'm governor. Because you will change. I will, I will not. Oh, yes, you will. I will progress. You know, there's also progress. If I, if no, I mean, no. I was 10 years ago. It's called progress. I don't think so. <laughs> That's a good word. I don't think so. And, and, and you see, for me, honestly, yes. mm. what I thank God for mm. was that at a very young age, mm. I got to interact with top leadership. Mm. So from the time I was 22, mm. you know, I was with President Mikey Baki. Mm. And I demystified this thing called leadership, mm. that I could sit and the President of the Republic is taking notes. Right. I sat with the ministers and I was like, you know, we think these guys know everything. They're as clueless as us. I've sat with the president, Ruru Kenyatta, who did TNA. I worked in Treasury. I've seen how government works with him. And so for me, I'm not, there, there's no culture shock. You mm. know, you get a new guy who's coming out to start. Yeah. yeah oh, 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 no, I don't have time for that. Mm. And also because I have a political future that I'm looking at. So mm. why would I mess it up at 37? Still I have am, a lot to do. I am waiting to have this conversation with the boy Shimeo. Yeah. You, Thank you. You, you know, you, you know that, that sounds oh, like he knows. Thinking. That sounds he like he knows I'm gonna, gonna gonna I'm gonna be in that position. <laughs> Inshallah, from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us today, Senator. Thanks. Come again. Let's have a longer conversation again. Asante. Um, it's 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 been a lively one. Senator Johnson Sakaja has been with us since the top of the hour, and we've also been live on KTN Home since the top of the hour. The conversations continue up to 10 a.m. This is the Situation Room on Spice FM. We've been live on KTN, but we're also live on Spice FM KE, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and www.spicefm.co.ke. Parting, parting, parting shot. Let's make Nairobi work. Let's make Nairobi work. Yes. Okay. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. All right, so the conversation right. continues about a minute. 94.4. Spice this is Kenya's biggest conversation. Uh, Lawrence Basharia says a very sober leader. Just one question. There have been differences between MCAs and the national government, especially with the governor. The MCAs must worship the governor for them to receive funds and other projects development. Ah, how would he deal with that? Actually, those are very good questions that are coming in. We had seen it earlier when uh, Sakaja was still having a conversation with us. But we will raise that with him and we'll get the response for you. Keep it right here for more in the next hour as well. You can call in 0719-012600 and keep the conversation flowing on Spice FM KE, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and also on Instagram. In the situation room this morning is Siti Muga Nduoko and Eric Latif. Keep it right here for more. Good morning. up your
your life. The latest news from around the world, 94.4 Spice FM. This is Newswire of Dennis Aceto. As preparations for the 2022 general elections guide to their home stretch, REBC has announced that it has issued Inform P Lyco SA holdings with the tender to print ballot papers and other important documents such as voter registers. The company defeated 11 other companies, including Al Gurea, who were involved in the 2017 elections. According to REBC chairman of Folaji Bukati, the tender has already been awarded and that during next year's general election, the commission will only print ballot papers based on the number of registered voters. In the ongoing registration exercise, IEBC has registered 499,098 new voters over a two-week period, a small number compared to its expectations of registering 3 million new voters thus far. Now, this year's KCPE and KCHC candidates in 162 schools will have to take their national exams in other schools after the side institutions failed to meet the required the, the requirements. Rather, that a school must have 40 candidates before the exam center is officially registered. The number of students who have registered for this year's KCPE and KCSC exams has risen to over 2 million. Official data from the Kenya National Examination Council shows that 831,026 candidates have registered for the KCSE exam. While another 1,225,693 students have registered for the KCPE exam. KCP exams will start on March 7th and end on March 9th next year, with the KCSC exam starting on September 28th to end in April 1st. Deputy President William Ruto's visit to the coast region ends today with a visit to Lamu County. Ruto has been camping in the area since Thursday last week, where he continued to campaign for the UDA party as well as his ambitions to become president next year. Ruto also continued to promote his plan to boost the economy from the grassroots level through the bottom-up economic program. He also took every opportunity to strongly criticize President Uhuru Kenyatta's agreement with ODM Chief Raila Odinga as the source of the timely completion of some of the various development projects intended to be implemented in coastal counties. Meanwhile, ODM leader Raila Odinga continues with his Azimio Moja campaigns in Mount Kenya for the second day today. Odinga is expected to visit the Rakaniti and Embu counties. Odinga camped in Meru yesterday where he assured the residents that he has no problem picking a running mate from any tribe as long as they share the same vision of achieving development projects. Now, Director of Public Prosecutions has dropped graft charges against nine accused persons in the Aror and Kimorer corruption case. In a new application filed in court and a certificate of urgency, the DPP produced a charge sheet that removed nine people who had initially been charged alongside former Treasury CS Henry Rutich in the scandal. The prosecution wants the court to consolidate Rutich's case with that of former KMVDA boss David Kimosop, who has been charged in a separate file. According to the application, the consolidation will reduce the number of suspects from 18 to 9. In an affidavit by State Council Alexander Muteti, the DPP says the consolidation of the charge sheet will also result in the reduction of the count from 40 to 30. Muteti argues that consolidation will was necessary as the two cases arise from similar facts and circumstances and therefore will not be prejudicial to the accused persons. And Migori Governor Kotobado, along with several other suspects, will today know whether they will be required to answer to charges of misappropriation of county funds. Obado and his associates are accused of embezzling 256 million shillings from Migori County. The other suspects with him are his four children, Dano Chola, Scarlett Susan, Jerry Zachary, and Evelyn Adiambo. Others in the case are Jared Kwaga, Christine Ochola, Penian Auma, Jora Mutieno, Patroba Ochanda, and Caroline Onyango. In total, there are 28 charges against the suspects accused of planning to steal county funds through forged tenders. The prosecution in the case had sought to, ch to change the indictment before Judge Lawrence Mugambi, who will decide the fate of the case today. Now, tributes are being paid to former U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell, who died of COVID-19 complications aged 84. The former top military officer died yesterday, according to his family. Powell became the first African-American Secretary of State in 2001 and a Republican President George W. Bush. He also sparked controversy for helping Ghana's support for the Iraq war. President Joe Biden, calling Powell a dear friend, said he had embodied the highest ideals of both warrior and diplomat. Former President Bush described Powell as a great public servant, and Barack Obama said Powell understood what was best for America and tried to bring his own life, career, and public statements in line with that ideal. This is Newswire. I'm Dennis Aceto.
104.4 Spice FM. Nairobi. The uh, section is actually still jam-packed, guys. We're going all the way uh, from the roundabouts through to Westlands and outbound as well. Gong Road seeping just a little bit. Uh, Bagathi Way just at that entrance also. A bit of a thing there. Uh, that was your escape route then from Nangata Road. Going towards Aerodrome also is quite jam-packed as well. That entire industrial area circuit still looking a bit messy, guys. And then connecting with Jogo Road out towards Kaloleni and then towards the roundabout at Kamkunji slows down a little bit around Haile Selassie. We're still in traffic hour, so things are looking a little bit messy. Thicker Super Highway, a lot better now. Traffic is just then around Madari and then going towards the Pangani underpass, not as crazy as it was earlier. So good, yeah? Good. Uh, doing really well, at least for now. Let's see what it looks like shortly. Uh, incidents, accidents, hope there are none. Should there be any, let us know and we can warn people in advance of time. Spice FMKE on Twitter. Text on 40127. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room. It is the seven only minutes way. after nine. This is Kenya's biggest conversation, The Situation Room. Thank you very much for always tuning in every morning. Siti Muga has the challenging proverb of the day. The lion can be strong, brave, and fierce, but it doesn't eat its young. The lion can be strong, brave, and fierce, but it doesn't eat its young. No, it doesn't. So you said today you'll be telling us which specific dialect of the Kalenjin. I did. I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yet 2022, is it? No. Huh? You know, one of the things that you find, this, um, by the way, my source mm. is um, a collection of these proverbs mm. by a certain gentleman by the name of Johanna Rotich. Mm -hmm. They've written a whole book on it. And uh, one could call it even scholarly. But uh, he does not specify which community. It doesn't say? No. It doesn't. Ah, uh, okay. In that conversation about uh, Nairobi, Job Isabai was saying Nairobi's problems boil down to the culture and what? Social fabric. The social fabric. As much as we think tech and innovation will help, I think we need to change our culture. For example, we automated parking, but we still pay, have, we still see parking boys. So whose culture is changing there? Actually, huh? the um, the automation isn't the problem. Mm. No. It is the entire system working in tandem. Mm. You go to the CBD and you want to park. There'll be individuals who will find you parking space. Yes. <laughs> you can double, triple park if you like. Yes. Now, why is that possible? It's possible because... With the, uh, with, with the exception of that parking space, which is at the Basilica, okay, which is fairly extensive, we don't have enough parking space in the city to accommodate just the number of vehicles that we have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or we don't have, again, you've automated, but is the system comprehensive enough to ensure that it caters for the flow and traffic? You know, automation doesn't mean you put a machine or somebody has a, a, a point of paying machine where they say, okay, g give me a number, uh, say, uh, pay this. Mm -mm. That actually is not really, they call it automation, but it isn't. Mm. Automation actually means, for instance, mm. there is, apart from just the registration number of the vehicle being captured, mm. the payment is stratified so that if, say, for instance, you're in Westlands, what you'll pay in certain areas of Westlands will change. If you're coming into, say, Nairobi City, if you are at Serena, it's a different matter. If you're going, meaning, 
everything about it is such that you understand that I'd better go where I'm going and the time I'm going and do my business and get out. But the moment it is 300 bob for the whole day, I'll pay my 300 bob and I'll sit the whole day. Why would you be sitting the whole day? Well, one of the things about parking is... You'd assume know. that, I'm assuming that you'd, you're going somewhere. You're the business, business. It's, my, it's, my, it's, my, it's my car which you'll be sitting there the whole day. I well, yeah, because you still have business in town. Yes, and because it is safe. What I'm trying to say is this. Huh? Uh. For a long time, many of you may not know this, but Sarit Center did not actually charge for their parking. It was mm. free. Mm. And I think what woke them up to that reality, perhaps my thinking was, the parking was always full, especially yeah, folks on weekends. be parking in there and then going yeah. to do the other business but and then safe. come back later, right? It's safe, yes. Not even just later, even a month later. <laughs> okay? Now, automation means you have a smart solution that also takes care of the traffic. Mm. Not just go and plonk your car in one particular place, pay an amount and that's settled. No, no, no. If traffic isn't sorted out, then that automation process is not really complete. It doesn't really work. No, it's not complete. I see the, the, the parking boys are serving that need of the fact that the parking spaces are limited and there are more and more v people who are coming looking for parking. Oddly enough, they do. So they, they, they provide that service. They do. And they even provide security. They also provide safety, by the way. So it's, it's, it basically is a pointer, a pointer to the failure of the system. Yes. Because they can't, they, the county government should be doing all those things. Those fellows provide that system. Mm. You will you will actually leave them with your car keys. They will find a parking for you mm. when you appear. And by the way, you still pay the county, sometimes but you also pay them. Sometimes they'll search the county for you. Yes. You don't get leisure. Means the case, Anna. Now you get to a bank and talk. Yes. Why am I paying three hundred bucks? Yes. Huh? Sky sana. So you can sort so it out. Sawa. Where would the deal? Yes. Culture. <laughs> That's where the culture comes in. But you know something? <laughs> huh? I don't really have a very big problem with that culture. I'm mm. going to explain why. Mm. That niche that they have taken up and the ease with which they do it, the very thing that the county government is supposed to do is what they're doing. Yep. They're you supplementing the county. Yes, services. you can park. You'll be, there'll be no inconvenience. You're guaranteed safety for your car. What more do you want? Yep. And when you come, you will be able to take your and go wherever you're going to go. And you're there for a short time. If you're there for a short time anyway, why do you need to, you know, spend like half an hour hmm. looking for a slot when you can give them the vehicle? They'll do that one uh, lap as you get in, get out, and you're gone. You it's, know, it's it's a lot of things that are that need to be fixed in this in this uh, city. Very many things. I remember the former town clerk who has also vied to be governor a number of times now, Philip Kissier, mm -hmm. once saying, "You know what? Parking in the CBD is like caviar. It's it's a prime it's premium. Mm. It's premium, mm. and that's why I'm charging a higher premium for you to park in the CBD. But then that also attracted backlash." Because it doesn't mean that because I park in the CBD, therefore I should be punished. If you provided an opportunity for me to leave my car elsewhere. Elsewhere and get in and out of the CBD. I will gladly park elsewhere. I don't have to bring my vehicle to, to the CBD. Why am I bringing my vehicle to the you CBD? See, the the because that's the only place I can take the my The lazy vehicle. approach to this, Eric, mm. is that they don't want to cater for the time that you actually want to spend in the CBD. Yep, It's blanket Everybody pays the same. Yeah. And yet the truth of the matter is, that's what they ought to be doing. And also, not everybody wants to be in the CBD. But then, if the parking is the CBD, you'd rather park and then walk or take a matatu. I mean, it's a series of things that when you look at, speaks of people who didn't think this thing through. Mm. And if they did, now others who have thought it through, are ones who are now providing that solution. Yep. They looked, they saw the gap, they figured, you know, this one. Pay for the time yes. that you're here. Yes. Now, that whole brings a whole conversation about, should I be paying parking when I go to a hospital? <laughs> yeah. Should I I'm pay a, for a parking? I'm not going to have a good time. Neither <laughs> am I operating business, either going to take care of an ailment or going to take care of somebody else who is suffering from one. Again, it's the same story. Mm. People would come to hospitals, park their cars there. Others would come park their cars because they knew they wanted to go elsewhere and they knew it was free <coughs> and fill up the space.
You see how, like, when you're going to town and let's say you're going to park in front of a bank and they're the reserved spots, you don't pay for that parking. No. You don't. It's a, you're going to the because bank the, the, to, the, the to do bank business. The bank pays for it. The bank yes. pays for it, but then it doesn't pass it on to you as an individual. And they understand uh, that you're here for a short time because you're here as a client exactly. to transact. So shouldn't that be the same understanding if you're going to a hospital, for example? There should be a minimum, and the minimum should not be less than two hours. There you because go. you know very well. Remember the other time when you were having conversations and uh, James was calling and complaining about how long you take to get service in a hospital. Mm. Because you as a hospital, you know how long it's going to take me to see a doctor mm. and get uh, medicine at the pharmacy and leave. Give me that as a minimum. Mm. Say five hours, come in. Don't charge me for the Don't parking. charge me. Find a way of validating. When I'm going to the pharmacy, uh, it will be validated. Yeah, when I'm getting my drugs. It will be validated at some point. Mm. But then I get out. But you can't just say, you know, as long as you driven in 15 minutes have passed 100 bob. 15 mm. minutes oh, five five you, you drop someone you come out <laughs> you're paying pay mm. yeah it's now, at a that cow. point now it becomes punitive it becomes a cash cow mm. and it's completely immoral mm. if you think about it okay church is also doing the same they are church yeah did you just describe the parking at uh, Holy Family Basilica? I did. <laughs> you, you, you know, I hadn't quite seen it in that light. I don't forget that Holy Family is church. No, no, no. Okay. I was looking at it from the point of view <laughs> of the public that requires pub, uh, parking. I had, I had forgotten that there's the, a the, the church attached to this thing. And if you come to church, you also park there. It had, that, 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 there was a gap. <laughs> you hadn't connected. No, it hadn't connected. Now it's connected. Well, it's a good thing that the Holy Family Basilica, but they decided to do that entire parking bit. That's what the city county should be looking for mm. and looking at how do you come up with parking silos in other places. Big conversation anyway to continue um, on all this. Let's hear from you as well, 0719-012600. Let's combine this conversation and all the conversations we've had as well throughout the morning. One is, okay, what needs to be done in this Nairobi? Two... How do we get more people to register as voters? Two weeks and we're basically at 15% of the 6 million target. IEBC is looking to register 6 million voters in a month. Two weeks, halfway down the road, they've only registered less than half a million voters. Yes. <laughs> How, what's happening? Is it that uh, we also have that mentality of, ah, Last minute, we are going to in a fungo next week. No, IBC should add time, they'll add time, they will. No, but that's what people are or thinking. Or is it because also, as a caller called in and said, one of the issues here is information. Does IBC have the money to actually provide that information? Apart from seeing it in the news, has IBC taken out adverts and gone out there on, uh, on caravans and said, We are doing voter registration? Have you gone to the universities? They are open. Have you gone to the colleges? They are open. These are the people who are above 18 and maybe have not taken up a, voter, a voter's card. Have you gone there and said, you know what, you can register as a voter? And have you even facilitated and said, I understand you are in the University of Nairobi mm -hmm. today, but you may be wanting to vote in another uh, part of the country. We can actually say, you will end when we come, we shall say, if you want to register in this county, we set up separate tents mm. such that UON has 47 different desks. Nairobi, across all the 47 counties. You want to go to your county, say, I want to register in this particular center. Because if you are now in Nairobi and you shall uh, assume that on August 7th next year you'll be elsewhere to vote yeah. or you want to vote elsewhere, what happens? Now, this is where now automation would actually be very useful. Indeed. Mm. One of our callers said something that was very interesting. Mm. And I just thought, okay, well, then this would make sense when, you know, CT suggestions previously, which actually should be entrenched in the school system, in the elementary system, basic education, mm. that, you know, voter and civic education starts at a very young age. Because can you imagine the, the, ele the eligible voter today at 18 years old who can get an ID is the target for IEBC? I believe they said of this number... They're hoping that 60% will be the young people, yeah. people who are now eligible to vote by nature of the fact that age. they have an ID or mm. they can get an ID, right? Five, one year ago, they were 17. Five years ago, they were 13. Mm. Just teenagers, right? 
how much education have they received in the school system in terms of what now you're going to bombard them with in the next 30 days over what they ought to do when it comes to their responsibility as a citizen? How much? What do they know? So you're coming and you're putting umbrellas in their estates. People are just seeing them and they say, yeah, come and vote. Bring your ID. Boom. Go, done. They've just gotten an ID for a lot of them, right? Even if they've had one. Even that responsibility of having an identification as a citizen of this country, they've not really, really come to terms with. An ID is a pass to get in here. An ID is to make sure that, you know, you can maybe open a bank account or register for school. That's it. It's a pass to somewhere else. But essentially what you're asking them to do is place a huge responsibility of citizenship and, and nationhood in this process of registration. How much information ha have they been exposed to regarding this. regarding this thing that you're asking them to make a decision? 60% of the numbers that you're targeting are from these young people. How much have you given them in terms of knowledge of what they're supposed to be doing? I can see why people will be like, oh, okay. This is just a cloud that's passing over. We're not really sure what's going on. Okay, register, done, gone. Ben? I can see why people wouldn't. I can see why people would hold back. Mm. I can see why people would say, well, you know what, that's all nice. But we need to finish school right now. We'll get it done later. The target of your exercise is not duly informed about what they're supposed to be doing. Of course you're going to have half a million people out of seven million. What do you saying, expect? Saying whatever they want to say. Let's go to Mombasa. Anthony is on the line. Good morning. Yes, good morning. How are you, Anthony? I'm fine. I'm Anthony from Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm also an aspirant uh, from the Walangombe Ward Nyali constituency in the Kanu ticket. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now, we are expecting that politicians are mobilizing their supporters to go and uh, register as voters. Are you doing that? Well, uh, that one is only left to the aspirant, mm. uh, especially mm. not yet elected aspirants. Mm. All elected leaders, we don't know where they have gone. What do you as mean? As we are speaking now, mm. I'm telling you out of experience, mm -hmm. because we've never seen them on the ground, we've never seen them mobilizing or even giving people initiatives or, or incentives to go and, uh, and uh, register or even change their ID, um, uh, registration polling stations or, or, or doing anything to do with the registration. So yesterday I did something which is, uh, which really, uh, I don't know, it really hurts me. Mm. I used over 1,000 shillings to give the people who wanted to register as voters and uh, you know, those who wanted to transfer mm. their vote. Because, you see, corona actually affected many people. Mm -hmm. Some people left their uh, areas where they were uh, staying because of uh, hardship in life, and they are now staying in a different place. And these people need to change uh, they are vote to, to vote in that particular place where they are living now. Can I tell you what they were told? Yes. They were required to come with them a bulk of six uh, uh, receipts for the rent for six consecutive months they have been staying there. Uh. They have been told to go to the Mzewamta or Clan Elder to give them a, a clearing uh, letter. Mm -hmm. to satisfy that they are living in that region for this period of time. Mm -hmm. And who was telling they them? Are also, they are also being told mm -hmm. they go to the area chief to be given a clearing uh, 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 letter to go and change their voting to satisfy that they are now going to vote in that particular area. Mm -hmm. Now my question was, this is a person who lived to hand, hand to mouth. They are only hawking. They are only depending on 100 or 200 shillings per day. This person is using transport here and there just to go and vote. I'm asking. Five good years they have never seen the leaders coming to ground, at least pushing them or with giving them five, 50 or 100, at least to make them, motivate them to go and register. We are being told that Mombasa people are not turning out to, to, to register as voters. This is what is happening. Yesterday, on, on Friday, I was in Nairobi. I, I received several calls that my Mwishimeo come and help us. We want to take part in voting. These people are saying we are not interested in voting. I want to give you a clear example. And I am hoping that this time round, 
you are going to call Tobias Chanji, your representative here of KTN, to go to Jomo Kenyatta Public Beach and see what is happening on the ground. Mm -hmm. This is a place where almost 4,000 people, traders, are, are doing their trading there. Mm -hmm. But none of them, my friend, I'm not cheating you, none of them is going to take part in voting. Mm -hmm. Reason? They have changed their residence. Some have come all the way from Tuapa Kilifi. Some of, them, some of them have come all the way from uh, Bamburi, uh, Kiembeni. At this distance, you are going to use three different vehicles, 50 shillings per transport. You come all the way from Kongoweya, Nyali, you go to Mshomoroni using 50 shillings. From Mshomoroni, you are going to Barsheba, 50 shillings is when you reach to where they used to, 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 to live. This is a person who cannot afford that thing per day. So he it, has people to depend on. To understand yeah? you, Anthony, what you're saying here is that yeah. people who want to change um, their voting stations, their polling stations, and even their wards mm. and constituencies are being yes. denied the opportunity to do so. Yeah. They are being denied. Who is denying them this opportunity? There are three people here. There are pe three people here. Okay. Just random people? Who are these? Who are Where these? are they from? Do they work in a particular we place? We have IDC office that is not giving a clear guidelines on how you can transfer your vote. They are giving a lot of reasons and unnecessary issues that makes people bar them from motivating them, from, not motivating them from taking that. You know, last year, so, uh, no, the, the last general election... Anthony, let's, 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 uh, let's, stay, let, no, let's stay on this cause for, for a while. Eh? Okay. So you give us an example of somebody who went to this registration uh, clerk, and the registration yes. clerk is the one who told them, I need to see your proof of residence before I can, yes. I can transfer this. Yes. Did you go to verify this yourself? I went to verify this and I took even a photo of this to, to, to I can give you an evidence. So My you, friend, if you can come to where I am, so you went, I am now. You went, you, went to I, the, you went to the clerk yourself and you asked, uh, you asked them and they confirmed that this is what they're supposed to do. Personally. And in fact, I went straight to assistant chief. I even met chief Hapel. Our chief area is a, a woman. Okay. I went did to you speak, the three people I went to. Did you speak to the IBC clerk? Yes, I spoke to her. And the IBC clerk told it's, you that this is an instruction that they have? This is an instruction that they have. In fact, she even showed me a bulk of papers on the table that these people, all these people want to transfer. They have a uh, uh, vote mm. which has not been approved, you see. So which means you are going to that office hoping that your uh, grievances are going to be uh, ratified instantly but you are going back without anything. Do you think this person is going to be, uh, get motivated tomorrow to go back to that office mm -hmm. with this stranger life? So we, we how, are how did you escalate this? I'm, I'm, I'm tricking this on you because you want to be the, the, the people's leader. So as their leader, yes. how did you escalate this? How did you take it up? Well, uh, uh, if at all that thing is, uh, is initiated, that law is initiated, I had to come back and uh, cajole them at least to comply. But they told me point blank. That, my friend, if at all there is no one who is going to push us anywhere uh, anymore, then we are going to do away with that voting altogether. Now tell me, we are going to experience a skewed election where a certain area, many people are not turning up to vote just because they voted the last general election, they voted a distance ago. In fact, I have even three people from Meru. Now, Anthony, mm. uh, forgive me. From but Meru, they told me they Anthony, are not going to vote because Anthony, of the, the, what they experienced. Anthony, you, you'll forgive me here. I'm not taking you just like any other voter. I'm treating yes. you here as somebody who I'm assuming has been elected as yes. MCA. So you have some responsibility, okay? I have you, a responsibility. You have not been elected yet, but this is what, this is what you want. Have you, gone, yes. have you gone, taken this up with the regional boss of the IEBC? to establish whether this is actually the instruction that mm. they've given the clerks on the ground? With the clear evidence they show me, or the, the clerk of IBC, nearly um, constituency. I saw it by myself, and if at all there are some few people who are complying, who are capable enough of going back, coming back, going back, going, and they are complying, mm -hmm. there is no problem. But as we are speaking now, not every people are equal. You cannot expect someone who is living in hand-to-mouth 
coming, going to the, it's a, as if he is in a new process looking for ID. I, of course, I have many people who do not have even an ID. They have done that. But you cannot even apply using that waiting card. You see, my friend, if at all you can allow me or, or, or you can come to where I am, I will tell you and they will also speak their mind. It is not something that is a um, fallacy or, 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 or a perfect truth. Okay. I'm telling you out of experience and I know what is happening here. All right. Mm. That's something to follow up on. Thank you very much, Anthony, for, sh- for sharing that experience. Uh, uh, my of what's friend, happening. So you said this is, uh, just a minute. This is which particular just polling center? This is what particular registration sorry, point? Well, uh, it is in Kongoea, Kongoea Nyali constituency, Kongoea ward, uh, Ziwalangombe ward, because that is er- my area of um, uh, sphere of influence, Ziwalangombe ward. Okay. But in uh, particular, uh, Jomo Kenyatta Public Beach, they are okay. traders here. In fact, they are now being pushed by KWS. So these people are stranded. These people have got nowhere to go, but okay. they want to be part- participating in this coming, uh, forthcoming general election. Okay. They don't have anywhere to go and vote. Huh? Yeah, it's it's a good thing to raise with, you uh, can, with the IBC. If you can give me uh, 30 minutes later, you call me them because I'm on my way going to that, to that place. Sawa, sawa. Thank, yeah. you, thank well, you, you very much, Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. Will you call me after 30 minutes? We will see whether we will be able to reach somebody who can even clarify this as well. Thank okay, you very much. Thank you. Or even you, you can even call Tobias Kianji, you are representative here, KTM representative. We will. Okay, Asante. thank you. Kenya's biggest conversation. What are you f- experiencing on the ground as you go to register? Have you heard what Anthony is saying? So there are some polling clerks who are saying, or some registration clerks who are basically saying that uh, for you to change your uh, polling center, mm. you have to produce proof yeah. of residence. This is in, the first time I'm hearing uh, of this. Uh, very strange. Is that your resident in that Because area. I've changed before and I've never had to, you know, nobody, to prove that you've moved. Yeah, I've never had to prove anything, anything yeah, like, you know. Moved. Especially bring six months receipts of rent. <laughs> that uh, that is totally unheard of, and that's why I was trying to push him back and ask him. So, have you actually followed it up with IABC mm. beyond the registration clerk to establish that this is an instruction that has been given legitimately? But there by... wasn't. They left. I. You asked him the question <laughs> twice, mm. and I was waiting for him to clarify and say that it is the IABC officials who have stated that. But that wasn't clear. Yeah. Mm. That wasn't clear. It's odd. That's quite odd. What experiences do you have? What is it that's making people not turn up to vote? As we were before we took the call, we were talking about the young people and whether they feel motivated enough to want to participate in this uh, exercise mm. at all. How many young people feel that they have, you know, a role to play in choosing the next government? How many feel that they can even trust that their vote will count? Yeah. Um, because we even one of the callers had earlier said, some of these youth don't feel like it's going to make a difference. Yeah, 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 you're telling me to go and vote for what? Mm. Uh, and what does know, it matter? Yeah, vote for what? And then there's, uh, we're surprised at the overwhelmingly high number of young people also who feel as though it's already been decided. Mm. Or they're just so tired of this whole thing. They're, they have apathy, direct apathy. They're just feeling... Ah, that is none of my business. You politicians go deal with your things. I'm dealing with my things. 26 minutes to 10. Let's hear your calls. 0719-012600. As we take this quick break uh, to see what's happening on the roads and also look at the weather forecast for the rest of the day. Good morning. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Spice up your life. 24-7, around the world, non-stop. This is Spice FM. An old way in a society where men have become very lazy. Mm. They have made people's daughters <laughs> become mama fours. You know mama four? Yes. <laughs> that you come to a man's house, maybe yeah. you went out or you've come for a weekend. You find all his shirts mm. in his laundry basket. Yeah. He was waiting for you to, to come ex- and clean I know them. his wife. 
<laughs> including his inner garments. Right. Yeah. Ladies, stop doing that. Let me let me. Those tell are you. wifely duties, and even some wives don't. That's do that. literally what I was about to say. I was wondering, you know, there's even some wives who don't even who refuse to do that. The only way to live your best life is to create a balance We're between still work. At cloudy conditions in Nairobi. Um, we will see today highs of 24 and lows of 15. It's mostly sunny in Nakuru at 20, highs of 26 and lows of 15. 15 will also be the low. In a rainy Nyeri at 18, it'll go to highs of 23. In Eldoret, we'll see highs of 24 and lows of 14 and sunny conditions through the day. In Mombasa, it continues to rain in some parts at 25, highs of 30 and lows of 24, while in Malindi at 29, light rain, highs of 30 and lows of 25. In Kisumu, it's partly sunny at 26, highs of 28 and lows of 20, while in Kakamega, partly sunny conditions at 26, highs of 28 and lows of 16. Kampala is raining at 22, highs of 27 and lows of 18, while it also is raining in Dar es Salaam at 28, with highs of 30 and lows of 23. Johannesburg is cloudy at 10, highs of 19 and lows of 7, while Lagos is now cloudy. Those clear skies have disappeared. 24 degrees, highs of 30 and lows of 23. We're looking at rain showers in Kinshasa at 20, 24, highs of 30 and lows of 23. China in Beijing, 14 degrees, sunny, highs of 14 and lows of 1, getting chillier by the day. And in Paris, clear conditions at 16, highs of 23. London is cloudy at 18 with highs of 21. We'll see lows of 16. And New York is waking up. It's 10 degrees and clear. The highs for today will be at 20. Are you ready? Okay. Spice FM. All right, so what are we looking at? Uh, still traffic getting into the CBD is looking a little bit better coming off of the thicker superhighway. Then it, you know, ebbs and flows. But then Kiambu Road also building up again for some reason. Uh, still traffic there. Uh, coming off from Gong Road, also looking um, a little bit better. As well as uh, Langata Road, just now past the Wilson Airport and around the roundabout. But beyond that, not too bad. And then coming off of... Uh, the of Landis Road towards the Kamkunji roundabout is where we'll see the most traffic. So much better. A little bit on Mombasa Road in outbound, um, right around Imara Dime and then out towards Cabanas and such outbound traffic. So we'll keep an eye on things through the day. Will you help us out on Spice FM KE on Twitter and text on 40127? Classic soul, R&B, smooth jazz, neo soul, and nostalgic ballads. Make some noise. Yeah. You're listening to Spice FM. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. Ninety-four. Tomorrow is a public holiday, so don't listen to anybody telling you it's a different day today. <laughs> it's a Friday. It's the nineteenth day of October, two thousand and twenty-one. Prima Shuja Day. Very, very poor turnout on voter registration exercise so far. With a target of six million shillings, the IBC reports that two weeks down the road, they have registered less than five hundred thousand people. That's about what fifteen percent of their target. Six, six million. Six million registrations. I said shillings. You must. Oh, <laughs> target of six million people, new, it's, it's <laughs> newly registered people. <laughs> you know, when you say six, it goes to. So when shillings. you say million, John is on the line. Shillings. John, good morning. Morning, morning. How are you guys? Salam alaikum. Thanks, John. Yes, now yes, it's Friday. Mm, I was glad you want us to believe. Mm. Mm. Yes, now um, I, I'm looking at this in a very different way. Uh -huh. To me, it should not be a concern that people don't want to register as voters. Mm. I don't know why we are concerned that people don't want to register as voters. Why? Because, because we already have people who have registered as voters. <laughs> and, <laughs> and these people we are forcing to register as voters, they are going to do two things. Mm. Because we are literally actually forcing them to register. Mm. One, either they will register and don't vote. Or they'll register and make wrong decisions at the voting ballot. Mm -hmm. So let's just let people who really know why they need to register. To, because I don't think that people but, are not registering because they don't know. But don't you they see know. that is a concern as well? That why they are not coming to register could be any of the reasons. Could be number one, because they just don't believe that they have a power. Number two, 
that they uh, do not want to participate in this exercise. Number three, that they don't feel that they belong. All those reasons are valid reasons to raise concern. Because it doesn't mean that the 19 million who registered in last, who are registered so far, are very good decision makers. Mm. They, are, they are valid reasons, mm. but you don't deal with them by telling them to register. Because even if you force them, okay, if you make them register, because either they'll register because you have bribed them, mm. or there are people will be told, uh, uh, there are politicians who will bribe people to register, or the others will register just because. Like, I'll give you an example. I have two sons who are now, for the first time, they're eligible to, 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 to be voters. Mm. One, has, uh, one, I talked to him and he accepted to register as a voter. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure he's going to vote. Mm -hmm. The other one, I said he doesn't need, he doesn't see why he needs to register as a voter. Mm. And I was saying, I will only encourage him to go and register as a voter if he knows why he needs to be a voter. But if I just push, if we just push them to register as voter and they don't know why they need to register as voters, then I think it's a disservice to, to this country. John, can I ask so you a question? Make wrong yes, sir. Uh, so, do you feel that this knowledge that you speak of, that somebody must have, or an understanding, is it something that you wait for them to arrive at on their own and in their own good time? Is it something that is introduced to them, something that they should be talked to about, something they should get to understand because of participation in discussions with other people? I think it's, it's a mixture of both. Uh, let me give you my own example. The first time I registered as a voter is 1992. That's the first time I voted. And I don't think I, 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 I at that time, is, is the information I had is the information I got from school. It's not something I was taught in school. Mm. It's just by interacting with people. I think at that, at, at that time, at uh, that period, especially just the beginning of multipartism, there was a lot of uh, political awareness, especially at the young people. Some of us who are just joining college and that. It is not there anymore. Even in the college, even at the university, it is not there. So, so to me, uh, if we just tell people, go and register as voters, you'll just have these people in the, in the, in the, in the books. But most likely, the mm. same people are not going to vote. Mm. So what we need, we need to start from, do they know why they, they are supposed to register? Right. Right as opposed to let them go and register as voters. Mm, mm. Okay. And that's where we are meeting. Okay. That's yes. actually the point of our conversation. Yeah. Seeking Thank to you. understand why. Thank you, John. Karanja in Ivasha, good morning. And I can see um, Simon Meshak and Jackie, you were calling earlier when, when you were on during the break. You can call back now. We'll pick your calls. Karanja, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very fine. Uh -huh. I think the water registration yeah. should be a continuous process. Mm -hmm. From the time that it should not be the time given, is, the time given is very short. Given the terms that the the from the methodology mm -hmm. of who to register, how to register, and what I said, the issue of misconception. Mm -hmm. You hear yeah, the, the previous call was talking about uh, these people, they are given some papers to register. You know, you are, you are being asked, uh, your constitution that you recite. These are the issues that they, they give misconception. Another thing is, uh, I see that maybe they have now been to the mm. I, I, There's I an issue with your line, Karanja. There's an issue with your line. We, we, I think there's an issue with your line. Simon in committee, good morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, the station. Good, good morning. morning. Uh, now, I wanted to confirm mm -hmm. that what the, uh, that aspirant from Mombasa yep. stated is true. Hmm. I, 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 actually, I moved now from Kamiteruru to Dadora. Uh -huh. And uh, the last time I voted, I voted in Kamokoji, Kamokoji constituency in mm -hmm. E3. Mm -hmm. So I went uh, to 
uh, Dadora Fees uh, 2 registration uh, crack. Mm. Mm. And maybe to clarify, first of all, is that the polling, cr- the, those registration cracks are not changing. The, that is not the point where you are changing the, your, your voting uh, station. Okay. Or your polling station. Mm-hmm. They are referring to, they are referring you to the IEBC offices. Okay. So you go to the IEBC offices, they ask for, uh, and that is the I, evidence the, con- the that constituency IEBC mm-hmm. office. Yes, the constituency IEBC offices. Uh-huh. So I personally went there. It is uh, located in the the building that houses uh, the Dadora Post Office. Mm. So apart from all those requirements that the aspirant has stated, mm. is that if you don't have that, you go to the chief to get a letter. So I, since I didn't have the, the rent receipt, the meter is, I told them the meter is token. We pay using token. Yeah. So I don't have any, 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 receipt, any, any bill. electricity bill. Yes. Mm-hmm. So on going to the chief, the, the most interesting thing is, is on going to the chief's office mm-hmm. is that they have not been authorized to give that letter. That communication has not come down that they should give they're that not, you they're that not letter. aware yeah, they have yeah they are not aware that they should give that letter okay so that's just back a bit simon yes so you were told that for you to change um where you want to vote in the next election you need to go to the constituency ibc office for that new uh, constituency yes and which i went it is when just you, near when you go there how many things do they ask for as proof of residence okay they asked for okay they didn't ask for me for six months they asked me for either a rent receipt mm-hmm. and an electricity bill mm-hmm. that, that shows that i live around yeah or within 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 the constituency mm-hmm. which is now is the, the, the Bekasi north constituency yeah so I told them the uh, uh, the rad road doesn't give me a receipt. Yeah. <laughs> and then they asked me for the for the electricity bill. I told them I pay using token and actually pay using M-Pesa. Yeah. Now he told me now the only the the, the IABC officer told me that now the only other, only other option is to bring a letter from the chief. Mm. The of, the chief's offices are located next, actually next to to the IBC offices. So uh-huh. I proceeded to the chief's office. Uh-huh. Okay, we didn't. We were a group of people actually. We oh. didn't find the chief. Uh-huh. But the person we found there told us, even if you found the chief, mm. the communication has not come. They are not aware. They have not been authorized. Actually, the words were there. They have not been authorized to give the letter. <laughs> For registration, <laughs> for 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 to give you to, to give show you that this you letter are resident to of, prove residence that you are resident of of this area. And this so is just, just a door next door to the IBC. Mm. <laughs> Imagine. Oh, God. So we left, and actually that was my day off. So now I don't know whether, whether I will even change, oh, and I'm not sure that I will go back to Kamokoji to vote. I don't know who can address that actually. That is actually a serious it's concern. It's a major issue. Um, you know, l- listening to you, <laughs> uh, uh, yes. and from where I said, it sounded like sabotage. Yeah, it's, it, a, it's, a, it's actually, I don't know. It's like and someone, someone is the Yes, yeah, someone is deliberately trying to discourage people from actually registering. And changing, and actually changing is important because imagine if I live in Nadora, why would I go and vote in his city? Yeah, yes. Or if I, or in Kamete Road, you see, it's, it's, it's a bit interesting. I don't know why. That's actually a very, very valid one. Yeah. And thank mm. you, thank you for I confirming. Can confirm that I went. And, and you were not the only one when you went. There were others who Actually, wanted to do the same. Made, it was chaotic. Actually, when I when I entered the office, I found chaos. The only people 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 shouting hmm. to the IBC <laughs> officer, and I, I wondered why. 
then uh, I was de- actually I was dismissed in a minute. I was told if you don't have those, please uh, go Just get go. At the chief minister. Oh, then the, I was going to the chief's office. You can't get the letter. So uh, I just uh, now abandon the business. Oi, Paul Sana Simon, and thank you. Thank you for sharing this with us. We'll follow up so, and find out from the so IBC. It's true, it's true what you are, you are, you are, the, the aspirant was saying. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jackie in Kisumu, good morning. Good morning, Latif. How are you? Very well, thanks. Uh, it is true that the officials of IBC are sending people to get documents from the, I don't know, the chiefs and what have you. I'm also a victim. Uh-huh. Currently, I live in the village. I moved from the time of Corona when COVID began. Right. Now, I wanted to change my vote. But then these people say they have to get a letter from the chief that I'm a resident of this place, something of the sort. <laughs> so I gave up. I said, ah, it's not a must. I'll... It's not a must I vote anyway. <laughs> you see. And then <laughs> So did you have to go did you have to go to the constituency IBC office? Uh, no, the the clerks around, the clerks who have the been assigned to do the registration. Mm. Yes. They are telling us that uh, no you have to get a letter from the chief or the to to prove that you're a resident of the place. Mm. So uh, some of us gave up, like me, I gave up. I said, I'm not going back to hell with the voting thing. <laughs> number one. Number two, yeah. the youth are not encouraged to take vote. Actually, I've been encouraging. I live in the village, and most of them are even, some of them are even 20. Mm. They don't have IDs. Mm. And those who have, they're not interested in voting. They'll tell me, Kwani, what is the elections going to help me with? Like, they're not interested. Mm. Mm. You see, some of us, when you are registering for the first time, we were so anxious. We were excited that you're going you to You wanted to do this. But yes, I wanted it. Nobody even forced me. But I've realized the young tax currently, mm. they are not and interested. And why are they not interested? Why? One, I think the, the politicians around, mm. they, I think they want to be bribed, something of the sort. Somebody feels like. I, if you want me to vote for you, give me something for me to register uh, as a voter. I see. Yes. That so, is what is happening in the area currently. Mm. So, I don't know how... Maybe I this should do, do some sensitization. You remember, I remember in 2013, mm. there was this thing of uh, Uraia. Yep. So, actually, I was one of the people who were trained with the Uraia thing to convince the people to take votes and what have you. Mm. I did the the IBC registration do, on 20 in 2013, mm. but there was no way we were told during training that we should take letters from keys and something to for what? people to change their vote. Well, I've changed my mm. voting centre in every election. I have never mm. had to do this. And Jackie, this so, is this is know. this is specifically for those who want to change their centre, right? Yes. From what you've heard. Yes. Yes. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Yes, I don't know. Maybe you, you guys should pick up the issue with the IBC or we something. We definitely but will. That yeah. is on the ground. It's just we strange. definitely will. Thank you very much, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. Is it possible? So this that is in Kisumu, Kisumu Nairobi, 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 Mombasa, and Mombasa. Mombasa. So it's happening. Yeah, uh, it's very strange. Was there an added requirement? Because uh, in in finding out any of this is, of course, you have to look at what possibly yeah, could what be could have led to this, right? Because <clears throat> If this is happening, it's clearly that people are aware, one, that it's happening, but those who are asking for it, also there seems to be some kind of understanding amongst themselves that it's a requirement. Why? It exactly. clearly is information is, that has come from the central position exactly. at IBC headquarters. Because they're all said, saying the same thing. This is a requirement. So a new chief. voter, this is what you get. If they want to change their polling center, this, this is, is what, what you, you need. get. Was that communicated? And if that was, why is it was a Was that communicated to the public? Why is it a new requirement? Meshak in Kisumu, good morning. Yes, good morning, Latif, uh, City and uh, Ndu. Good, good morning. morning. Yes, calling from Kisumu. Mm-hmm. We have the same issue. I went for to change my my voter registration card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I returned that I left by that I came to Kisumu to change it. So when I went, mm. they told me I can't change it. I have to go to Duma Center to change it. So 
it is something that is so demoral. I left Taita Taveta to come to Kisutu to change my uh, voting station now. They're telling me to go to the chief, such kind of things. So it's already mm-hmm. demoral here in Kisumu. And do they tell you why? Or, well, they're just telling you that's no, the they're not telling they me. They're not telling me. They're not telling me anything. They only just go to Duma Center or go to chief. That's why they will now change the, your, your voting center. Hmm. So I'm just going back to Taita Taveta. So I think I'll see what to do next. Okay, I can see a tweet here by IEBC five days ago. Clarification. Voters wanted to change their polling details are advised to visit the IEBC constituency office that they wish to change to. So this is what then they mean, that uh, as you go to this IEBC office, you need to get all these details. If you want to change, go to the IEBC office. Okay. Kenyans can change voting details anywhere. No need to travel home. Um, so it was in reaction to a story that had aired on NTV that had said no need to travel home. So if, if for example, like uh, Meshak is saying, he had to come from Taita Taveta all the way to Kisumu, mm. uh, the story here was implying that he didn't have to do that. He just needed to go to Taita Taveta and say, my next, next time I want to vote, I want to vote to transfer my vote to Kisumu. But it would appear now, that from what you're here, what hearing from people is saying is different. That he was saying... Uh, no, you needed to go to Kisumu, the IBC office. But Chebukati did not include all those details of you need to come. See proof, the chief. Proof of uh, birth. This is... Um, Very strange. Um, this is quite strange. Because even in the previous statement that I'm looking at, during the first week of the exercise... 5,206 requests for voter transfer were serviced. The commission reminds all registered voters that application to transfer is done at the constituency office. Now, the requirement... Uh, okay. Uh, that's something I will find out. Why do you need to do that? Because that is actually quite frustrating. You have to go to the chief to prove that you belong, you belong here. Hmm. Or come with... Uh, proof of residence. This is a utility bill or rent or letter from the chief. Now you understand why we are at 15%. Yeah. Well, F- part of the reason. Imagine the number of thinking. folks who are getting frustrated by this process and saying, ah, okay, this is what you want me to do. Listen to the, the gentleman who was in, uh, I wrote it down, Kamkunji Dandora, right? Yep. Had a day off. Yep. And Simon. was going to sort out all of this right took a day off took a day off then you tell him he has to go back he'll say okay thank you very much i cannot get the any other day the next day off. i have off it's not likely that i'll be thinking about not this only that. i'll do something he else. will talk to others ah, yeah. and he'll tell others ah you guys want to go do that thing no, this is what happened it. to me forget it they say ah that's what you had to go through ah, i was thinking oh. about doing the same thing forget it i'm not doing it another one you tell you has, you will travel to taita taveta to kisum to kisu to you know, kisum <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my you head know, is really It's not just a look, skip look and a hop down yes. the road, eh? Taita Taveta is not a sub county. And then the chief says, "Ah, huh? I'm supposed to give you what letter? For what? For what? No, I don't know about that. Writing to who? Ah, uh, George, thanks for calling. But at the top of the hour, we come to the end of the show. Thank you for calling. We'll have a conversation with you again soon. This is Kenya's biggest conversation, CT. Let's conclude with the day's proverb and tell us why you picked this particular one. Well, the lion mm. can be strong, brave, and fierce, but it doesn't eat its young. You see, this proverb mm. struck me as a very, very clear message on basic do's and don'ts in life. Mm. Nothing cryptic, nothing too esoteric, just this can happen. This can happen, but this should never happen. Not complicated. It's not complicated. No. There are things that are certain. And there are things that should happen, must happen. There are things that should never happen. Should never happen. Should never. Happen. never. Happen. It doesn't should matter. Should the process easier? It doesn't matter whether the cub, the cub is really annoying the mother. The mother should, shall never eat no. the cub. Hi, no. Jalish. IABC will follow this up with IABC to find out, to get more information on this requirement for if you want to change your voter registration. Hey, hey. Interesting, yeah. isn't it? It's quite interesting. Thank you very much for joining us.
See you again tomorrow on Mashujade. We'll be here. Enjoy your Friday. 